Do it. Do it. Come on, kill me. I'm here. Come on, do it now. Kill me. Schwartzy, the podcast. It's a Schwartzy show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Schwartzy the Podcast, the Schwartzy Show. I am your host, Malenko. And I'm your host, Alex. Nice to meet you. It was good. That was good. You you chose to be just host. You didn't say I'm your other host. Or... I just, I don't know how to react otherwise. Like, cause, cause like it, two hosts is weird to me. Co-hosts is, I don't, yeah. Co- but nobody wants uh, then to we're both co-hosts, yeah, right? Or no, like, to, and nobody wants to be a co-host. Oh wait, is there a hierarchy with co-hosts? Like, is there a like, host and then a co-host? Yeah. Yeah, I, feel like, that, yeah. I don't like that. You're not a co-host. <laughs> you're just a host. And you're not an other host. You're okay. a host. Okay. That, that makes me We're on better. equal footing yeah, for yeah. sure. I think so. Um, dude, this fucking podcast. I've missed doing it so much. Yeah. We've taken a, a two-week break, but I'll tell you what I haven't missed. <laughs> 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 and that's my fucking hemorrhoids, dude. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Wait, do you still have? I thought you still had them. <laughs> I still have some hemorrhoids. Uh, the big foosh is gone, <laughs> but but like all, all of the like mini like there's a couple mini fooshes that are. Uh, I mean, I was sitting so much and sitting on hard floor doing this podcast, and I guess like I wasn't eating very well either. <laughs> oh, hard floor. Can you explain the to the audience uh, your your butthole? I would like oh, what, the, he's gonna the, fucking hate this. <laughs> the configuration, or like uh, of of the like. No, describe describe pooing to me with the biggest floof. Oh my god! Well, like okay, I mean this doesn't get talked about much, but like wiping is a huge issue when you've got like <laughs> giant hemorrhoids in your butt <laughs> because it creates suddenly more crevices. So every. <laughs> poo has to be a wash yeah i mean i think every poo just should be a wash dude i have been you know me i know you employ the wash every time method and i you know what i agree with your method the, the, even though sometimes the like you know efficient uh you know get things done guy in me is like I got to go somewhere. I can just, I only have time for a wife, (laughs) but you create time. You a lot time for poo and then wash clean up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing is the, the funny thing, the the question that I always get is, is, Oh, every time, like, what do you do when you're in a public bathroom? Yeah. And it's like, no, I mean, obviously in a public bathroom, I'll I'll wipe my ass, but like, um, I just wish I had a bidet. Like it would solve so many problems, you know, a bidet would be a wonderful solution. Well, this is like those toilet seats that are bidets. Oh yeah. Like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Them. That, that wash. Um, yeah. I mean, I think we're like, uh, effectively sealing the deal that now no one is going to listen to this podcast. <laughs> well, like when you were describing your hemorrhoids at first and the fact that I was like, Oh, do you have to like, is it like covering your butthole? Like you have to lift. <laughs> yeah. You have to like kind of pull flaps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you laugh it's really loud okay. so when you when you try and move away move, when you laugh i move away from the mic to breathe to breathe Toilet rain. yeah um dude we finally got to fucking running man i mean for the next like bunch of movies it's gonna be like i can't believe we're finally at this movie yeah just hit after hit after hit um directed by paul michael glaser glasser yeah i've i've never bothered to look into i mean he was a tv director that was a big point of contention i'm gonna just hit you with a how did you guess yeah, from please. the top how did you guess schwartzy really thought that this movie failed because of the director really not failed but just because it wasn't It was like a medium box office smash, you know, Mm -hmm. like it it like made its money back and then some, Mm -hmm. but like, you know, not too much. And Schwartzy said that because he thought that the movie was directed like a TV show and not a movie. You know what? That's fair, though, because it's like pretty cheap looking. I didn't realize that until now. Like this was like pretty... Like, some of it's really cool. Like, the aesthetic is interesting and It looks like it's shot for, like, 
four three what is that totally yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah like box uh totally like yeah. uh yeah watching it on a cathode ray full frame yeah yeah i don't know like i should we jump into the plot are we doing the plot dude one thing that 80s movies get right every single time every time is <laughs> the farty bass music intros <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God, man. The yeah. opening credits, the font, the... 3D the, animation of the 2D running man. That was great. I love that. It was so cheesy. I love it so it's much. It's so cool. It was really cool. I, I immediately was like, oh, the credits are amazing. This is so cool. And it's like cornball, and, but like something felt like very modern about the movie at the time, at least what I think of the contemporary time. Yeah. Um, it just felt like, like an updated version of like sixties science fiction movies. Fair enough. Yeah. Dude. Another thing that the eighties loved was the opening crawl, giving us context for what kind of future we're getting into. You mean 2017? I do mean 2017. We're like smack dab in the middle of Trump's America in this movie. Yeah, and it's like weird to have like, oh, a game show host is the president of the United States. It's weirdly timely. And like, even in 2017, when like people made reference to like, oh, haha, like Total Recall is supposed to happen now. Fucking sometimes it does feel like Total Recall has happened. It feels like weirdly like uh, 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 timely for, for now. I would agree 100%. Food and natural resources are in short supply and uh, it's a police state essentially. Um, it's brutally enforced. The TV is controlled by the state. And uh, the most popular show on TV is a show called The Running Man. Uh, all art and communication are censored and no dissent is tolerated. But there's a small underground resistance movement. Um, are you just reading the crawl? <laughs> <laughs> In terms of like cultural criticism, yeah, this movie is pretty on the ball. I mean, it predicted the... A disparity between the rich and the poor. Yeah, it predicted not necessarily that that television, but like screen oriented entertainment would be dictating a kind of popular, both popular culture and culture culture and political culture. And dude, I love in this movie how mindless they make the content. It really is what it's like. Oh, like they it's make all about it content. They make it cartoonish in the movie, but it isn't really that different from that. No, it's completely it's the it's, same kind of trash, but it's more banal trash in real life. It's that that is the saddest part is that like is oh, that it's we, banal? We, yeah, we don't even need that that entertaining a thing for it to be entertaining. We just need two guys do, talking into a microphone. <laughs> this movie couldn't have predicted the future better like it's it's pretty on point yeah i think so too to start off uh we see schwartzy at go ahead do it what what point do we see schwartzy oh at? my god we see schwartzy like two minutes in uh, the final thought of the beginning crawl is that the pacification of reality tv um only works sometimes and the times that it doesn't work you know, and then we get an ellipsis and it cuts to helicopter. Yeah. He's flying the helicopter and... I mean, they lean so hard into him being like the most sympathetic dude in the world. Immediately, where, where, immediately, like, like the guy, the guy on the radio, who's this like faceless military dude, command, yeah, commanding him to just genocide a bunch of people, and then he's like, "The hell with you!" The hell with you! And like, like so awesome, just so awesome. He's so cool because like in this movie, especially when I was a kid, I was like, whoa, he's so heroic. Like so heroic. Yeah. The hell with you. Yeah. I will not fire on arm, uh, unarmed, unarmed innocent people. I will not fire on helpless people aboard missions. We return back to base. They just want food for God's sakes. <laughs> oh, I loved it so much. So Schwartz, he's disobeying a direct order and uh, he's aboarding the mission. I like was like, you just gonna abort the mission? Like, I know. It, it's cool that he does that and it's so heroic, but he doesn't hesitate for a minute. No. Which, you know, like, is 
he was always such a pure form of good. He was always like lawful good in movies, right? Yeah, it's it's weird because it parallels uh, what's it called. Charl- his career par- parallels Charlton Heston's career in a lot of ways where he would do these like sci-fi movies where it was like almost anti-establishment but at the same time very pro-establishment that's so <laughs> like, true it's so weird and they're both Republicans they're both Republicans yeah so his disobeying this order is causing quite the stir among his fellow helicopter mates and the dispatcher tells the co-pilot, who's so ready to take over this mission, he immediately pulls out a gun. He's like, yeah, take over Richards and kill all those people. And it's so weird that he pulls out the gun expecting him not to react. Also, why tell him on the radio, like, get rid of Richards? It's like, whoa, yeah, he can hear, can you. hear you. Yeah, so, so outrageous. The chopper is briefly in disarray because Schwartz is beating up everyone and then the sh- chopper goes out of control and Schwartz falls out hooking his foot into the side Ugh. of a of a crevice in order to hold himself up into the helicopter and the bad guys now the cops are contemplating whether or not to let him fall and one of the guys is like, should we do it? And the other guys is like, they told, they told us to bring him in and then they pull him in and he's got that like evil 80s smile. What does he say again? He says, the cops say, you're going to fry for this. And the other, the mustache cop says, and I'll see you in hell. <laughs> it's like weirdly iconic though. Like that whole scene. I loved it so much. They, it's way more iconic than it needs to be. Oh, totally. And like those guys are given way too much screen time for that whole scene. For that scene. Yeah. Okay. Cause another- they all seem like they have like weird personalities that they gave them. It's true. Like that mustache guy was like, Oh, like these guys are like three dimensional people. It's weird. Another thing that the eighties did so much was fucking pistol whipping, dude. Like he gets hit in the face with the end of a rifle. Yeah. Like how blacks that out. doesn't kill him. It would, they were way too lax with pistol whipping in the 80s. They were like, it led you to believe, like, head injuries could be pretty fucking serious. Not only that, uh, breaking glass on people's heads, concussing them to a point where they pass out. It's like, whoa, dude, like, that guy needs to go to the hospital. Like, seriously injured. We cut to Wilshire Detention Center 18 months later. So it's, you know, 2019 deep into is it eight, does yeah. it say 18 months later 18 months later oh, i didn't even remember that that's crazy so it's 2000 it's now <laughs> we're deep into the trump administration here <laughs> um, america's uh, become even more of a police state and it's basically a forced labor camp immediately we see the guards taking an explosive collar off a dead prisoner and that close-up of that bald dude who looks like he's out of alien cubed i was going to talk about alien cubed I love that so much. It's straight out of Alien Cube. He's bald, sweaty, and... And, like, slightly yellow light, where it's, like... It's, it's like, the palette of that movie. He's got one milky eye. Ugh. And, uh, dude, Alien to the Power of Three totally <laughs> took this aesthetic. Totally. Totally. Like... It, yeah, like fully. It looks straight up like one of the characters. Yeah. Like I'm sure even the casting director had that photo to work off. I of. feel like it. I feel like it. And then Schwartzy comes with his fucking wicked beard. With his wicked beard, and he's carrying a beam. Like it's like it's he, like the tree is a, It's as iconic as the commando tree. Fully, fully. Bearded Schwartzy, dude. Oh, bearded Schwartzy. Dirty sweaty muscles. The guards are talking about um, the latest episode of Running Man and betting on an episode while they round up some prisoners. And then they do some quick exposition here where they're showing like the perimeter um, getting shut off. I know. And uh, the prisoners going in, the perimeter, of course, being the area (laughs) which the prisoners can't leave without getting their heads blown off. And Schwartzy meets with the recipient of the world's most famous purple nurple. <laughs> Amazing. Yes, Yafed Koto Laughlin, oh. who's like 
for as little as both those dudes have, like they do so much. They were so iconic in my mind and they, they come off as like, oh yeah, like these are Schwartz's best friends. Like they're just really good friends. And in this watching, I realized that they weren't really friends. They didn't like Schwartz. No, no. Interesting though. They Interesting. respected him. Let's get to that. Um, also, like, oh, I had a question, like, why are the guards, are the guards wearing masks because it's toxic? I because so. it's like, so, so all of them have cancer. <laughs> One of the guards actually has the word toxic written on his back. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh man, that sucks. Yafe Koto and Ben Richards, Schwartz's character, start a fight and they start commotion in the entire prison camp and everyone's just so on board to fight. Oh, it's totally, great. totally. They're like, oh, this is way better than uh, doing all this work. Carrying heavy beams. Also the classic arm twist that he does in so many movies. And I thought, <laughs> I thought that was like a legitimate move. I don't know if that's a legitimate move, actually. We get a cut to Weiss, who is opening up a computer in a Pelican case. And he's trying to recreate the codes that he saw a guard earlier using to disrupt the perimeter. Yeah. They realize that the walls of the containment that they're in are preventing them from, you know, getting an uplink. Yeah, this a signal for the 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 internet. Their Wi-Fi is fucking gone. Their so wi-fi, they have to go they outside. They have such bad Wi-Fi connection. <laughs> um and when they when they all finally escape to to the outside. Dude, they take the fight outside. Can I please yeah, I really please, please. I, I, can I say you were just saying how you loved how much depth was given to the police characters in the beginning. I love how much depth is given to Chico. Dude before we get to Chico, I just wanted to, I fully, I fully agree. I want to talk about Chico, but like the fact that like, what's his name? Uh, our Schwartz, gets his first one liner where he's like, oh, yes. like, uh, he's talking to Laughlin and he's like, you're a hell of an actor, Laughlin. And he's like, who was acting? I love that kind of shit. The banter is what made me convinced that they were friends and they are friends. Exactly. He also gets another one liner. That's amazing. He lifts up one of the guards and throws him over a rail. And before he throws him off, he's like, need a lift. Oh, uh, there's so many. <laughs> this is this movie hands down wins for most one liners of Schwartz. Yeah, it's I got think. so many. It's so got many. So many. And I want to talk about all of them. <laughs> okay. But okay. Let's get back to Chico. Chico. Oh my God. Okay. 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 So Chico is this like curly haired, um, scruffy guy who is given a lot of screen time in an interesting way. You see him being a kind of, I guess he's set up as a resistance fighter. Maybe. I don't know. Like, I mean, for me, watching it this time, it seemed like he was a dude who was like, I'm, I'm like, I've had enough. Like, I've waited long enough to escape. You know what I mean? Exactly. But his, the weird brother, or I'm assuming brother, I wanted to it be looked like his brother. It, was, it looked like it is his brother. Yeah, he's like, Chico! Chico! And then Schwartz goes, Chico! <laughs> 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 I love when Schwartz went, Chico! Chico! Because, because it's like, whoa. You're naming this character who runs before the perimeter is deactivated. <gasps> he runs through the perimeter. They save him by shooting the guards who want to kill him. And Chico has the best head explosion I've ever seen in a movie. It looks so fucking good. It holds up straight up to this day. And and as the perimeter goes down, the lady voice goes, perimeter deactivated. Perimeter. Deactivated. And that was like, of course, I wanted to talk to you about <laughs> perimeter deactivated. Yeah, of course, of course, because it just feels like it's in my DNA. Of it's course. like in the DNA of our relationship. And it's like so funny every time I hear it. Schwartzy does some amazing face acting in this scene because he's. Happy that the perimeter is deactivated, but he's sad that he lost his comrade. Yeah. Chico died. Yeah. So he does this kind of like, he does two takes. One take is, man, he, if he'd only waited two more seconds. And the next face is, I'm so glad to get out of here. Yeah, yeah. But like he does such a good, bittersweet face. Yeah. Loved it. Still a really good actor. Still proving himself 
every single fucking time. Every single time a, a review mentions his accent, every single time somebody is like, he's a bad actor, he's always fucking proving them wrong. It sounds like you really have have uh, a little uh, crush on Arnold Schwarzenegger. In every movie. The music. <laughs> I really love the so music good. in this. I love the music in this movie. I mean, good music in Schwartz's movies. Yeah, it just... This does... I, I will say, though, this does feel cheaper. It does feel like like the, the budget was like... I noticed the budget, too. Ex- I noticed the budget. Extended to as much as possible. Don't and like, get me wrong. They do really cool shit in this movie. I think so, too. But it looks budget. It, it, the, and you know why? A lot of it is the directing. It really is. It really did suffer. It's a great script. How did you guess? How did you guess? Is that this movie is based on a book written by <laughs> Richard Pockwitz, <laughs> also known as Stephen King. <laughs> I, oh, yeah, dude. Richard Bachman. Stephen King is the most new metal writer. <laughs> Nothing could be more new metal than getting a movie picked up based on the writings of your pseudonym, <laughs> like of your pen name. That's pretty cool. And though. you're already an author. That is pretty cool. I mean, that's like one of those things where it's like, I've heard, I'm not going to make this, uh, like, I'm going to assume this and I want it to be true, that he was just like, oh, I'm too popular now. I, I really want to change my name to see if I still sell. That's exactly what he wanted to do. Apparently, that is exactly I, I've what he heard wanted to that. do. I don't know. I like. I've never confirmed that. I mean, Richard Bachman. In many ways, I enjoy his writing more than <laughs> Stephen King's. We cut to a grimy, smoggy nighttime LA skyline. I really like the way the city looked in this movie. I thought they did a good job. It did look low budget, but it it had it felt like it was based in reality for me. It kind of had Blade Runner vibes. It does. I wrote that down too. Like the it's like they to- stole a matte painting from Blade Runner. Totally. It sort of looks a little bit too gray in the back. It doesn't look quite real. But what I did notice this time that I really liked was the lady reporter, like, like giving like a sort of not even reporting, but sort of like commenting on, was she commenting on him escaping? I'm pretty sure she's commenting on him. I think they were commenting on the prison escape. The prison escape, right? But it seemed like her job was just to just describe what's happening that's like kind of fucked up in like a propaganda kind of way. Totally. It was really cool. Like, but it was, it was such a throwaway. They were just watching Fox News. Oh my god, dude. I'll get to that after, but like we, Lee and I talked about this. His name is Lee, goddammit. We'll get to it when the game show actually starts, but the reporter itself, she was so like kind of happy and like wearing pink behind, uh, behind her was a pink and the rest of the world was just this gray darkness. And then it's just like shows these like people watching this television and they're like in like a slum, you know? Such a good contrast. Yeah. Um, our heroes are wearing the most conspicuous outfits ever, <laughs> especially Yafe Koto. He's wearing like a wide brim fedora and a trench coat. He looks like he got his like outfit from like a disguise store. <laughs> I thought they looked really cool. And Schwartz, he's like weird, like hat that he was wearing. I love the yellow like hard hat it's like a mini hard hat yeah it's like a stylish hard hat which is cool because it kind of shows the working class element of this movie yeah. We have the poor getting much poorer, so the styles that the poor are rocking are like more of a working man's style. Yeah, or like inherited or like yeah, it's really cool. Really cool stuff. Running Man is on the TV with the voiceover explaining the Running Man reality TV show rules where prisoners of the state fight gladiators to the death for the entertainment of the masses. Dude, Dweezil Zappa greets fucking our crew he's stevie he has two lines in this movie but he's so iconic he's so good yeah he does a really good job and we also meet fucking uh uh mick Mick fleetwood Fleetwood. (laughs) his name is just mick in the movie i loved it i loved it great yeah he has one of my favorite lines in a movie ever this was by the way how did you guess how did you guess this was mick fleetwood's first role amazing he has one of my favorite lines ever when he takes off Yafikoto's collar, 
he goes, goodbye, my lovely, oh. and throws it into that weird concrete safe yeah to explode it safely in that was that was awesome because the explosion seemed realistic in a way that was like oh this this would explode a person's head but it wouldn't explode a whole thing i was like that weird detail was really interesting to me i 100 percent agree with you as yafe koto is having his collar taken off though they have some really cool expository lines about the schools being shut down and him being sad for the children because they're only going to get their information and their knowledge from television and from state-run things which we know the state is trump's america yeah (laughs) yeah yafet and and weiss we'll get to weiss i don't think we've mentioned him actually yet Weiss is amazing. He's like so the cool. quintessential nerd, nerd guy. Yeah, I loved like, it so he was, much. He, I was like, oh man, like he reminds me of like people I know. <laughs> like he totally leaders. reminds me of people I know. Um, He's totally the like he would be the hero of a 2019 version of this movie. Oh, totally, totally. Uh like a bookworm. Actually, speaking of that, when when Schwartz Schwartzy has a line in this um, what's it called in this scene where he says low foreheads full of dreams and talk. Yeah. Do you remember that? I do remember like, that. Like outrageous. I was very confused by that line, but I guess he's just calling them stupid. I think so. I mean, like he's still like, it seems like throughout the movie, he has this still cop mentality. It's sort of like a naive mentality of like, like, oh, I'm out for me. I'm doing it for myself, which like somehow undercuts the social message. But he ends up being like part of the resistance, which is like interesting to me. He Can says, I tell you? Yeah, go ahead. Can I tell you? A, how did you guess about our lives? How did you guess? <laughs> okay. Just yeah, okay. the low forehead thing reminded yeah. me. So Tata. I'm here to tell you about my experience with the Tata towel. Our father yeah. told Mama that... She had a low forehead and that that was a sign of low intelligence when they first started dating. It's like junk science. Yeah, like junk science. What is is that called? Phrenology? Thought the (laughs) 70s backwards. It was 80s. 80s still, dude. Um, yeah, he also said, he also has a line where he goes, I'm not into politics, I'm into survival. And I was like, Republican Schwartzy. <laughs> I mean, you know what? It's, it's interesting. I feel like for the reality of this movie, that totally makes sense. It would make sense that there would be people who would be in it for themselves and not being able to see the bigger picture. But I really love the resistance element of this movie. Yeah, me too. In a way that I never was able to appreciate as a kid. You know, as a kid, you love the glass gladiators you love the violence you love all of the costumes exactly but right now as an adult and knowing sort of what's going on in the world it's like that resistance had it right like yeah comrades and 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 yafet was uh amazing because of the fact that him as an actor provides so much depth with small lines like the ones you mentioned uh, and he just plays it so sympathetically. He like so leans hard into like, I care about this. This is our fate. And it doesn't matter that we might not survive, but really ideological. I thought that was super interesting as well. I'm glad that you mentioned Yafet because there's an amazing exchange between Yafet and Weiss and Mick in this scene, because Mick is like, why should I trust this cop? Yeah. He says a really poetic line. You're the cop that locked away all my friends and burned all of my songs. I love the burned all my songs line because you really get a sense of like cultures being totally yeah. censored by this yeah, yeah, for sure. fascist Trump state. For sure. Do you think he was just playing himself? I think he was amazing. playing himself. That would, that would be, be amazing. That would be you amazing. You burned my songs off of Napster when you stole all my music. Was he an old face? He seemed like he was an old face. That was something I noticed. Because is he still alive? Like, I'm pretty sure he, he is was still alive. He was an old man in yeah. this movie that was made 32 years ago. Yeah. I don't know if his hair was real. I really like the hair, actually. Oh, he was hair. such cool balding like I'm you. I'm so excited to grow out my hair. Oh, I can't wait until the sides are long and the tuft in the front is still thin and kind of like has that like it's up because it like can't go down. <laughs> You know, like Jack Nicholson when he was like early balding? Yeah, except I'm balder than Jack Nicholson was at his age. 
Really? Yeah, Jack was. No, but was, if you grow that tuft in the front longer, it'll be Jack. <laughs> it'll be Jack Nicholson. No, because it was always long. That's no, why. No, no. If you watch something like The Shining, he's he's balded. He's like thirty he, something in The Shining. He kind, it was kind of like it like plateaued in the center yeah, almost yeah. and then and then like he had like some thickness going here in the front, in the front. but yeah there was but, like a weird balding it was yeah, like it, it was separated it was like the peninsula separated into an <laughs> island way too early yeah yeah ah oh, he does have cool balding and schwartzy gives kind of a defiant answer to mick and this crew he's like you guys are you know you guys are all talk and no action just take this neck uh take this thing off of my neck and i'm gonna leave you and mix like maybe you've seen too much so cool yeah it was like really badass because they felt like he felt like he was i'm I, i'm the leader mick is the leader like of fuck the resistance. you i'm i'm helping you dude like exactly. i don't have to take off your collar exactly get caught you know what i mean that's why i was like when he says give me a brick and shut up i'm like Whoa, dude, you know, maybe you should shut up and munch on that stogie. Where's my stogie? Yeah, <laughs> but also, like, I mean, he's cool. Like, he's the action hero, right? That's true. He's so got to be like, the badass. Yeah, he's, he's got to be, be the libertarian badass. <laughs> <laughs> well, he also has to prove to Mick that he's the, he could be the leader of the resistance, right? That's true. Because Mick is an old man. He's not going to lead anything, right? That's true. It's almost like an audition. Yeah, exactly. So in the next scene, it's the morning and Schwartzy's getting a ride in, out of the city and Yafit and Weiss ask him to join them. They're like, why did you join us? And he's like, I'm, uh, I'm good. I don't want to join My brother's going to help me. My brother's going to help brothers. you. Oh, I kind of wish they, he, we met his brother. What would Edward look like? Oh my God. I love Edward as a non-character in this movie. It's <laughs> amazing. Think, it'd, be, it'd be sweet because I'm thinking like, are they twins? Or would he be just as muscly? We cut to the large network building and a fresh burgundy limo pulls up and it's fucking Killian, dude. dude Killian steals the show. Richard Dawson, so perfectly cast. So perfect. And this is the gr greatest thing is that we've got this beautiful contrast between um, Schwartzy, Yafet, and why I don't know Weiss's name, uh, but, but um, they're very noble yes. in their different things yes. that they've been established as. And then immediately we get this fucking rich piece of shit <laughs> who is such a, immediately such a terrible person that when he walks into the building and accidentally steps on a dude's mop and is like a really old sweet dude sweet dude and is like he's like oh i'm sorry mr killian and killian is like oh don't worry about it what's your name you're doing a great job and then they walk into the <laughs> elevator with fucking sven who appeared in fucking what's the last thing sven appeared in sven appeared in the last movie in, predator. predator um and then all of a sudden goes he has the line which is amazing if that guy's mopping here tomorrow, you'll be mopping for the rest of the week. And fucking right there, we get instantly who this guy is. It's amazing. May I flip you a how did you guess? Yeah. How did you guess? People that Richard Dawson worked for said that he was most like his character <laughs> in Running Man. Yeah. He is Killian. I could fully, dude. I would fully believe I that. I would fully believe that. Because it's not that he's, oh, he's not an actor and he couldn't pull that off. But the fact that you're like, he's already a game show host and they were just like, yeah, run with that. Like, why wouldn't they be like, take the opportunity to be like, yeah, this like cast this guy. Yeah. Like, it's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And fa like Family Feud is basically like a... a less extreme version of like that kind of character you know can i tell you edward's door code yeah yeah schwartzy gets to edward's apartment and he enters four four five five six six <laughs> amazing Do you know what's also amazing about this i point i i read about, I, I was like looking at this too it's like what they didn't change his fucking door code they just let this person like have the same code that was ridiculous it was ridiculous schwartzy gets into the apartment and he starts i guess presumably showering yeah and shaving his beard off Next, we get 
Maria Conchita Alonso playing Amber Mendez. So good. She is so good. She so good. is so much more than they were presumably casting her for. Yeah. Because she fleshes out this character Which amazingly. Which is a nothing character. It's a total nothing character. Nothing character. Like, the writing of the character is not great. And Pure it's, banality. It's very sexist. She yeah. is just, like, the woman She's a trope. Yeah, 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 exactly. And Maria Conchita Alonso turns this character into something transcendent. Yeah. I love it so much. For me, a lot of what did that was her not trying to speak out of her accent, but just like sort of like using the vernacular she would have normally totally, used. Totally. We'll get to that in a second because I just wanted to make reference to two more things Please. pre pre this. One is before before this scene where she comes in, we get a cut of of Kurt Fuller, the gross like dude who always looks tired. I love the perfect that guy. By perfect the way. that guy. I love him so much. And also, I wanted to point out in that scene, the in between scenes, the like '80s future suits that like '80s future business people will wear. Yes, is amazing. I love the aesthetic of normal clothing of people because it's like. Lee pointed this out while we were watching. His name is Lee, goddammit. He was like, everybody, and the future is just the 80s plus a little more. And it's, it's true, like, and it is. And it is. It is what that it is. fully is. We like, have our Reagan. We have our Reagan. We have our, our um, East-West Berlin split with North Korea and South Korea. We have our new Russia. Cocaine made a comeback. Synth made a comeback. So many things. Trap music is the hair metal. <laughs> yeah, basically. Also, the second thing I wanted to point out was fucking we get the introduction of Jesse Ventura doing his fucking like workout videos. His wrestler copy. Which was so amazing. Like that to me is such an interesting tidbit of like, oh, this person has finished his gladiator days and is now doing this like pathetic, like lame, like workout video bullshit. I love that. Amber tells... Alexa to turn on her lights, <laughs> make coffee, and turn on her cathode ray 480 DPI TV. <laughs> and yeah, we see Jesse Ventura doing his. It's like the classic sort of like, are you out of shape? And like, I, I, <laughs> I fucking love his voice in this movie because it's so much more Jesse Ventura than even because he's got so many more lines than in Predator. It's just like. But he he delivers um, a, a spectacular performance, and even I would say even better than in Predator. I would agree one hundred percent. He's so much better in this movie than he is in Predator. He was great in Predator, but in this movie, he was able to do what he's so good at, and that's being a wrestler. So he took it way over the top. Yeah, yeah. it just with all of the anger and like the kind of yelling ad copy that wrestlers do and not just that but even the vulnerable side of him which we later on see the the ability to to sort of uh make a character feel like they've been exploited by like a big uh what's it called a big corporation absolutely and like shunted off to just do videos now yeah in many ways jesse ventura's character of captain freedom in this movie is really tragic because he really believes in the art of this gladiator sport. Like a wrestler does. Exactly. And he really is only just a tool for the state. And he's sort of disillusioned. He is. But he doesn't know what else to do. Exactly. It's like, he's like, like he wants to maintain the status quo. Exactly. He's Killing, a really interesting character. He is. Killing is just like, well, we'll get to it. Like we we can we can get to it. One of my favorite lines uh, happens actually at this moment where um, we Schwartzy comes in. Exactly. Puts his hand over Amber's mouth. And he's like, who are you? A friend of my brother's? Oh, amazing. And the fact that his brother's name is Edward and his name is Ben, it's like, these dudes, these Austrian dudes are not named this. So, you know, my woke ass is going to talk about, <laughs> like, the physical intimidation of a woman in this movie. Okay. I mean, I just thought that if she was potentially Edward's friend, that he could have been like, hey, who are you? Instead what are you doing of, in my, my brother's apartment? 
But he did just get out of prison and the stakes are high. I get it. We can explain it away. I just feel like I'm noticing a pattern in all of these movies. Totally, totally. But here it's like specifically different in in like so much more an aggressive way than the other movies, I'd say, because... Like several times, I don't know if you want to get to this now, but like several times he like implies he's going to break her neck and it's like, whoa, dude, like, whoa, like, holy shit. I do want to talk about that. But first I want to talk about how I loved that despite him physically intimidating her, she's never really scared of him. No, no. In fact, she runs away from him and says, he's Ben Richards, he's in my house. <laughs> yeah, not just that. He, she goes, you're the man, you're Ben Richards. It's so awesome. I, I love, love it. how it's... much she yells his name because it's a really good tactic. That's what you do. You exactly. Should be like... You should be yelling it into the ether yeah. so that if someone hears, they can help you. Also, when it, when it cut, because she sees him on the TV, recognizes who, who she is with the pink lady by the way the on dress. the tv has a mustache. mustache oh yes yes i wrote that down too i was like i feel like at this at this point in in the podcast it's funny because every time i'm like wondering like if i should just have like a bingo chart of things that i'm like what is me like we're gonna have that i'm gonna have because the mustache i was like oh i know he's gonna want to talk about this because he looks so fucking good with a mustache he looks so good he with looks the amazing mustache. With and the he looks mustache. so much like a fucking piece of shit cop with that <laughs> he, mustache oh my god he totally does i didn't even think of that like 80s tv piece of shit cop yeah totally totally, totally. The next scene is is Richard Dawson talking about the ratings with the state. Yes, and he's casting the show with prisoners. And, you know, they're talking murderers, and he's just, like, handpicking people that he knows will be good for ratings. And he sees footage of Schwartzy running, and he has this, like, epiphany moment where he's I like... Love it. He says, I, he says, I can get 10 points of his biceps alone. I was like, sick. That's so a line this guy would say. And the idea of this guy being a really capable sort of auteur yeah. of reality television yeah. is just, really like, interesting to me. Savvy businessman, wants to make it really entertaining, doesn't really care that like lives are at stake. It's it's really awesome. And like, what's his name? Kurt Fuller, despite not having a big role, like is like such a good sleazy, uh, what's it called? Backup like, executive. Backup guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so great. For sure. And he's like, I want him. And they tell Killian that he can't have Schwartzy because he's still at large. Killian calls the social media division of the government and he gets the president on the phone. <laughs> Which was so like again, the subtlety of the of of choices in the movie to like sort of pick and choose these moments of okay what kind of totalitarian do we want this to be? And how casual do we want to make this totalitarian society? Because it doesn't comment on the actual society. It does comment on it. It but comments the on it through images. Yeah, but the but movie, the movie's not about the, the commentary uh, at large. It's not like them destroying the system itself. It's one faction of the system. That's the major faction of the system. Um and then, but then it cuts back to um, uh, 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 Amber uh, in her Amber apartment, tied up in her apartment. Which, by the way, love that she was a musician. I Loved love it. that she had a synth in her apartment that Schwartzy asks about. I know, I know. And then, and then is like rifling through her stuff and finds <laughs> contraband. I love this. This is something I overlooked on every previous rewatching of this movie. She has this kind of like badass element where she's like, come on, everyone does it. Everyone has contraband. Again, like the the weird... Shows you the cracks in the society, you know? Totally, totally. And then that part where he pulls up the money is like, money, that's what I need. He's so smarmy in this movie. Have you noticed? Like, it's not just quips. He's like, like full smarm. It's not... And it's it's beyond uh, like destroyer smarm where it just didn't work with the movie. Like, it fully works. No, this is a confident ass yeah. dude yeah, for yeah. sure and, and he's like, like he's like she's like you won't get far without a travel you pass. don't have a travel pass <laughs> yeah and he's like you do now i do <laughs> i love I that love line that. i love that it's so good because he takes the beat in such a perfect i feel like eastern european way <laughs> totally, i feel like totally. this is a joke that would make you oh, know what i mean 100 you do 
No, no I, I do. do. Yeah. I loved it so much. Ta ta ta. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the classic line that both of us will repeat where he's like, and you're going to help me. And she's like, what makes you what, something like what makes you think I, I'm going to help you? And then he grabs the, the, workout, the bench. workout bench that's bolted into the ground that she's tied onto. And he pulls it up and he's like, because I'm going to say, please, as he rips it out and he extends it in that way too. the deep rumble, please, is one of my favorite things to come out of Schwartz's mouth. It's really a remarkable line. It's a line that someone could just say so normally yeah. And not sell it. I read somewhere that Patrick Swayze was in the running to be the, you Schwartz's mean Patrick character. Swayze was in The Running Man? He was in The Running for The Running Man. <laughs> yes, I do read that. Um, and he couldn't have delivered that line. No. There's something that I wanted to mention. This this is back on track of, of Schwartz. Um, and I don't want to derail it too much, but I do want your perspective on it. Because when, how did this get made talked about this movie they talked about it in very different terms than we do they didn't intellectualize it in the way that that we did and it's it was a bummer because i was excited for them to do it and like not having listened to that podcast in a while like i just feel like i think we're right i think we i compared when i was watching this movie with lee i compared this movie to demolition man it feels like demolition man it feels like there's a satirical edge and it feels like it would have been better had it been better directed I 100% agree with you, and I do think that um, the budget and the way that it's shot kind of gives it... It doesn't do the nuances of the script justice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Though they are there in very tertiary sidelines that you overhear on televisions and screens. Performances. Exactly. Little details like the contraband. You really see a fully fleshed society even though it is a ridiculous amplified kind of 80s, RoboCop one, yeah, you know, eighties version of like reality. Um, the next scene is with Schwartzy and Maria going through TSA, and he's wearing this outrageous Hawaiian shirt. And, and hat combo, like a fedora, white fedora. And I think he looks really good in this outfit, white pants. Um, and this is the first time he says, I'm going to break your neck, if, if which was like, whoa, dude. Now remember, I can break your neck like a chicken. Yeah, it's like, holy shit. Like, that would be really scary. But like you said, she's not really scared. And he's walking by her at all times with his hand around her neck. I really like I agree it's it's this idea of just like physical intimidation that feels so of its time in the 80s you yeah. know and like as much as I can be like oh it's probably necessary because she has the past and he needs to get through and blah 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 but I like this one was like seem seemed like uh, this this doesn't need to be delivered this way and this doesn't need to be the line but it seems you know, too can, delightful I, in its violence, violence against, against the her. only woman character yeah, in this movie exactly exactly by the way no women in the revolution <laughs> Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, no women in the revolution. Um, also, the fact that like when they get to the TSA part, and there he's like rifling through the bag, and like some woman is like, "Hey, let him through! What the hell is going on?" And, and the security guard is just like, ah, "Just go through." In a post nine eleven world, would never fucking happen. I mean, one thing this movie did not get right is nine <laughs> eleven didn't happen. Like, also, if you have a scanning card. Wouldn't your picture be on of your file of or course, like of anything about you, your name? It's just ridiculous. Yeah. I, the fact that they get through TSA is like ridiculous. There's a lot. Of, I, I mean, I get why people would be like, this isn't a good movie, quote unquote, um, because it does have like certain flaws that you, I think based on the pace uh, you can get through very easily. I think it just like, f forget about it. That's not the important part. But like, there are some weird ass coincidences in this movie that like, are like, uh, this doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel like it's realistic. You know what I mean? Also, can I just say that Schwartzy says a sexist joke? What as he he's, say? As he's going through, he's like, can't live with them. Can't live without them. Yeah somehow manages to deliver it in a really great way because of his accent, I guess. Yeah. But I mean, like, 
it's just in keeping with the like sexism of the 80s yeah yeah um but then she when they when they get through to a certain point she tries to escape and she and- says that she's gonna throw up all over him because she gets air sick and car sick it it's another line that gives her this interesting kind of like edge where you're like yeah. she's thinking of every way to get out of the yeah, situation yeah. and it's like on this shirt like you won't even notice or whatever he says yeah it was like, really the great. banter's great yeah they they do do a really good job two very accented people and this is where she she's like help it's ben richards he kidnapped me i love that she says help it's and, ben richards and she kicks him in the balls which and, is great and also he looks so panicked and like when he's like looking around and then runs away it's like i've never seen him run faster in my life yeah. he was Booking, he was like sprinting. Yeah, yeah. If you want to see sprinting, Schwartzy, this watch movie, this yeah. scene. Definitely, definitely. Uh, and then when when he gets onto the like, what is it called, a tarmac? Yes. Uh, when he runs onto the tarmac and the police randomly shoot a net at him, it's like, is this really the most like? like easiest way to get somebody shooting a net at them i love the so net. ridiculous i love the net and i love that it cuts to amber and she looks really sad yeah and she she looks really sad can i also point out that the woman who yelled to tsa just let him through yeah she's standing beside <laughs> maria yeah, in yeah, this she scene is. and she's got a really outrageous sort of like uh like uh feathered hair yeah, yeah 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 with a really great perm job um hi cutie pie yeah one of us is in big trouble yeah such a great line from killian who's now confronting schwartzy and he's like i've seen you before you're the asshole on tv it's great it's great and he goes i was gonna say the same thing about you see like the funny thing is is one of my fa- this is a great line that killian delivers it's um you got talent charisma and balls and what's uh, interesting about that is that it seemingly parallels exactly schwartzy in real life because that's that seems like what would happen in at a point in his career where it's like this guy not just has like charm and like the physique, but he's like eloquent and like cool and suave. And he's like getting past all of my preconceived notions of a, like an Austrian dude, you know? Exactly, exactly. This is a total parallel to the executives in Schwartz's life that chose him for roles. Yeah, for sure. And like sort of had assumptions about, oh, I can control this fucking dumb guy. You know what I mean? And also, have, did you notice how Killian says running man? How did he say it? It was like the emphasis was in a really weird way. It was running like man. running man. Yeah. It was like, Oh, the emphasis was on running instead of man. And that was like a really interesting little, like, I don't know. He didn't do it on purpose. Like, I mean, he was doing it on purpose because he was speaking it, but it seemed like such a weird character thing. An idiosyncratic y- detail. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Killian pitches Ben Richards, a running man appearance in exchange for the potential of a full pardon. Yeah. And Schwartzy responds with, fuck you, (laughs) which is great. Yeah. He knows how to be to the point when he's not doing his one-liners. Yeah, he's not fucking around. I noticed that again in this movie that there's so many characters in Schwartzy movies that look at Schwartzy like he's not a fucking specimen of a human being. They're always like... (sighs) this guy i can fucking kick this. and they're always like young douchey dudes where it's like wow dude like but this guy like he's jacked absolutely killian has a joker up his sleeve he's captured weiss and laughlin schwartz's friends yeah and he's like you know what if we can't get the a material with you we're gonna have to go with the b plot and cast these two fuckers that was and, cool, though. I liked that. I mean, it was good blackmail, and it it's in keeping with Schwartz's dedication to being a decent dude. Yeah, it, it sort of both frames even more of Killian as an asshole and even more of him as like, oh, I'm the good guy, you know, even though I'm misogynistic. He's a total misogynist. <laughs> but, you know, that didn't stop you from being a good guy in the 80s. And so he blackmails Schwartzy into agreeing to play. Schwartzy gets science prepared with big needles. 
uh, like, what were they doing to him? They say something, but I don't know that I understood. It made me feel stupid because they say a thing and I'm like, am I supposed to know what that's Wait, doing what? to him? Yeah, what are you talking yeah. about? I don't know. Like, it seemed like it's like, oh, they're going to sedate him or they're going to like prepare him or were they going to give him, are they giving him steroids? Are they... Um, but in right in the next scene, they they introduce that fucking outrageous show, um, climbing for dollars. And now back to climbing for dollars, and they just send a bunch of dogs after a dude to climb up a rope and grab money. So a dude's climbing a rope, grabbing money, and dogs are biting at his feet. Yeah, and then he gets pulled down and torn to shreds. I would. 100% watch I this show. I would totally show. watch that show. <laughs> it felt like, but it, it, in keeping with, with the sort of sci-fi post-apocalyptic motif, that mo- more of the movie feels like Demolition Man or uh, what's it called? Or like the antithesis to, to Demolition Man or like in the same world as RoboCop, like almost like a different state. Um, well, it would be, it would be uh Los Angeles? It's set in Los Angeles. Right? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, but it's it's crazy that that like this random show that I wish they showed more like content from this this period. It was so funny. We cut to Amber. She's in her apartment, and I love the economy of the storytelling where she sees a news report that mischaracterizes the situation of ben richard's arrest Mm. and they say that he's killed a bunch of guards which isn't true yeah because she was there with him amber comments on it saying but that's not true (laughs) yeah amazing the thing i love about amber is even when she's by herself she delivers lines so wholeheartedly like Schwartzy does when he's by himself yeah have you noticed that parallel yeah they both have accents and they both say lines out loud in an unnatural sounding way but it sounds so great because of yeah. how unnatural it sounds yeah. so the show is starting the dancers are dancing the most 80s dancing you know why it's the most 80s dancing <gasps> i'm gonna flip you how did you guess how did you guess can i can i guess the how did you guess please guess oh the choreography by paula abdul <laughs> i love that paula abdul choreographed this so, dance i i i knew that and then was like watching it to the credits and was like, oh yeah, that's awesome. I'm so glad because because the, the dancing is really cool. If that dancing it's came really back, cool. the shifting to the side, oh, I, I love, love side shifting. It's almost like a little <laughs> crab walk. Yeah, it was it, really good. Like really jolty, like jagged movements, but somehow fluid at the same time. I love it. I love it. And the gladiators are arriving. The gladiators are called stalkers. Which is really cool. We get first confronted with Buzzsaw, Buzzsaw. who pushes a fan in the face and the fan goes, Buzzsaw touched me. Oh, I thought that was amazing. I love his nose is bleeding and then he touches the blood and looks at it. Tries the tooth. So (laughs) cool. So can we give context for tries the tooth? Sure. Give give context for tries the tooth. You guys give up or you're thirsty for more? Okay, little tangent here. In Home Alone, part one, the dad comes home, who's a great actor, by the way. Kevin has demolished everything, gotten rid of the bad guys, and the dad finds Joe Pesci's gold tooth on the floor, and he makes a weird face where he kind of contorts his upper Upper lip. lip. Yeah. And for some reason, his contortion of his upper lip made me think that he tried the tooth on. Like, my mind filled in yeah, the rest of this. Co- yeah, because that's what he was doing. He was like, did I lose a tooth? That's the implication, right? Love that. It's such a small little detail. I wish details like this happened in movies still, <laughs> yeah. but they don't. Did you guys give up? Oh, yeah, thirsty for more. Okay, let's go back to... People in the slums are watching big screen TVs that have been there, that have been placed there to placate them with entertainment. And I like the viewing parties because we get to see this double world of slums watching it on big screen and the bougie upper class getting Rich together Fox news people watching it exactly lee, lee pointed that out he yuppies. Was like, yeah yuppies but not just yuppies like dumb 
people like it's not like like oh i'm educated and i'm like a, you know like a fancy liberal person who no no like, no they're like just with this track young like, conservatives they're, they're like but it, it was crazy because like when he said because he said fox news to me yeah. and i was like holy shit this is exactly what it's like these people who are fully indoctrinated into believing that these stalkers who are genuinely like terrifying people yes. are like patriots. Yep. They're amazing. They're heroes. Yep. And it was like, it sort of parallels how people treat fucking uh, military people. Uh, but maybe I don't want to get into that. That territory. <laughs> get fucking killed. Um, this montage is great. Yeah. It has so many like little eye candy moments of Killian not wanting his hair touched and, you know, the dancers dancing, buzzsaw arriving, and the viewing parties, the rich, bougie viewing parties, and the poor, slummy viewing yeah. parties. Yeah, and in the poor, slummy viewing parties, they have that big chalkboard where everybody's taking bets, which is great. Love the bookies taking the yeah. bets. They were also giving so much depth of character. So much depth. And it also seems like there's like a heavy uh, Hispanic population. Did Definitely. you notice that? Well, yeah, because it's LA. It's LA, right? But like, but like the rich, the white people were in, on the show, like in the actual studio in audience, the audience. And, and the audience of the slums were all Latino. Yeah. It puts it kind of, it adds that race into the class element yeah, in totally. a really subtle sort of yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Next scene, Amber is with her friend sort of having a water cooler talk <laughs> about <laughs> Amber's this. recent experience being kidnapped. Her friend is so flippant. She's like, you could have been, I don't know. He Kill, killed he, like 60, he, 80, 100 people. He, he At one point she says, you're lucky he, he didn't, didn't rape you. You would then kill then you. Then kill you. Or, or kill, kill you, you then and then rape, rape you. you. And it was like, whoa, dude. Like, And she says it in a sexual way. Like, because as she's saying it, Schwartz is walking by with his court appointed press agent. Yeah. And he's being told you're going to be on this. And he's like, you know, he's kind of being told legal jargon about the show. Oh, yeah. I, and he walks by and gives Amber the worst stink eye ever. Yeah, totally. But, like, th this was one of the things that I was mentioning earlier where, like, some of the things, if you think about them too much, they just don't make sense. Like, what she works at the fuck. She happens to work at the thing, which is fine. Like, like I said, the pacing doesn't let up it's and it, breakneck pace it really makes you feel like it's totally okay that this is happening because they're just but like thinking about it is like oh this doesn't actually make sense in keeping with your line of thought on the economy of storytelling amber quickly leaves the situation because she notices that something's wrong with what is going on with Schwartzy and this whole Ben Richards butcher of Bakersfield fiasco. Totally. Well, like, cause she see witnesses him not doing the thing, the news lying about it. And then she happens to see him at her work. Like and he gives her a stink. Eye. Exactly. And then she goes off to look for, some kind of evidence about Ben Richards, like some kind of footage. Which was so corny. It was so corny. But I loved it. This uh, this I could forgive more, actually, than putting them into the, like, the same business or the same job. But I really liked it, where she's looking through, sifting through the files of tapes, and she finds Butcher of Bakersfield uncut or whatever. Yeah, it's like the uncut raw version. Yeah. Killian comes out to an adoring audience and he's so absolutely charming and the believability of him as a game show host is unreal. He has that moment where he quiets them down and he goes, it's showtime. The audience goes buck wild. Yeah. It's awesome. They love it. And he has the moment of who loves you and who do you, you love? love. It's so good. It's so the good. The yes. Yeah. And like how glorious it is and how it's shot is amazing. Like it just feels like a show that that everybody would watch. I would like, totally watch that show. I would show. totally watch that 100%. show. 100%. He's super charismatic. He somehow manages to, to uh, present this off screen character as such a piece of shit 
while somehow retaining the level of of confidence it takes to be that kind of host. And that's what like what you need from that actor. Next scene, dude. Schwartzy needs to sign a contract. Yes, I love this. And his court-appointed agent offers up his back for Schwartzy to use as a surface to sign this contract. And then to dot the line, he stabs him in the back with the pen. Yeah, he fully, like, leaving it in the back, too. And the guy's like, ah! And looks back at him frightened and then and runs then away. And then runs away in the most, like, kind of hilarious, Cartoonish like, way. Benny Hill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then he says, don't forget to send a copy. Oh, I love that. That was great. I don't know. People, there were so many lines that Lee rolled his eyes at. And it was so funny. His name is Lee, goddammit. But I like, the, I don't know. I like the one-liners. He pulls it off somehow. He pulls off the one-liners yeah. so hard. It, it is really charming to me. We get introduced to an amazing character in this next scene. Mrs. McCarlyle, who is the biggest fan of this show. She is the biggest Running Man fan. She is an old lady, at least like 80 years yeah, old. Yeah, totally. And an Killian, 80s 80. Killian loves Mrs. McCarlyle's star power because he milks it for all it's worth. So He's much, like, so much. And also that classic Richard Dawson move of like, like, Ah, oh, don't get too frisky, you know, that that thing. And then, like, kisses her on the cheek and shit. It's, like, so classy, quote-unquote. It's, like, old-school, old school like, classy, 80s yeah. classy. Totally. Killian shows the audience a deep fake of Ben Richards. <laughs> oh, my God! Holy shit, dude! Holy shit! Killing the hungry protesters from the beginning of this movie. I and mean, it's not really a deep fake. It's a, re- a recut. Later on, it's a deep fake. Later on, we see so much deep fake. But the recut is so bad because he it's says... It's just a recut of the first <laughs> scene of the movie. <laughs> and they somehow have all, all the, the angles. angles. Yeah, dude. Of course. Everybody's got cameras in 2017. What are you talking about? I love, I love all the amazing directorial angles we yeah. get. Oh, totally. Totally. Uh, the bad TV directorial angles you mean um <laughs> it's so like so i grabbed her sweet can yeah. <laughs> sweet can i grab her sweet can oh so we see schwartzy shooting civilians and they have like these really dramatic scenes of like women and children crying and it's really sad and killian has this moment where he's like yeah it was a really dark day in our country's history and then they just spin the narrative of like, but we've got him and he's here. Like, yeah, totally. And totally. he comes out, dude. But he said, but he says the, the line that he said, you actually perfectly, this dovetails perfectly into what you were saying. He says, he's ready to pay the price for our audience at home, which is fucked. That line is crazy. It's like, a really dark it's line. It's such a dark line. Schwartzy comes out in his like, it's a, a onesie that's also a like tearaway. I love the tearaway the onesie. I, I I love the shit that he's wearing underneath that like weird outfit is so cool. May I flip you? How did you Please. guess? Yes. How did you guess? So the yellow leotards that you're referring to have two Adidas symbols on them. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. I didn't know that. That's it's cool. amazing. Adidas made them. So perfect. I want to get. I want to get one. I would want to have one totally of those onesies. I would totally They're wear really that. flattering. It seems because very there's no like too. like moose knuckle. It's like perfectly like done up in the crotch area. Although is Schwartzy not really packing? I don't know. He seemed like he was packing in Terminator. I guess so. Oh, it's like, like a normal sized dick. I would say. Yeah, but like it's very very well masked. It's like what I do when I get out of the, <laughs> the water with my swim trunks because oh, it's yeah. maximum shrinkage. Oh, totally. I'm but, like total any territory on shrinkage there, when I'm in the pool. There's there's a uh, um, a picture of our, our Schwartzy in my short film of him naked, and he seems like he's got a normal sized penis. He just seems really big. I mean, I don't know if it's appropriate that we're talking about it, but why I really love that it's i mean it's a little body shamey but whatever um is it i, I mean we're not, we're not shaming we're not it shaming it it's, it's just like yeah, I'm, but I'm we, telling the you fact that, that we're discussing it makes it seem like it's a virtuous thing to have, to a, big have a big penis no i'm not saying it that well like at least i don't mean it that way i just mean the fact that like he's such a big person that it would seem kind of 
<laughs> oh, you just think like, proportionally. Proportionally, it just yeah. seems weird. He's um, definitely he's definitely in proportion. In, he in, did take steroids though. He did, and he Shrinks won eight times, eight times, uh, Mister Universe because he was so in proportion to everything. Like exactly, everything was in proportion. Uh, the the one thing that I really liked in this scene also is um, that uh, Whitman. Price and Haddad, the guys who won the game. I love the names of yeah. Whitman, Price, and Haddad. Yeah, it was such a weird, like, excellent choice to make. Um, and they're all like hanging out with these beach people, but also it just seems like it's the same shot over so and over again. Whitman, Price, and Haddad are prisoners that have played Running Man and have won full pardons. And we get deep fakes of them on the beach <laughs> enjoying the sun it's so poorly edited and it looks so badly done it looks like it was directed by the director of this movie <laughs> the scenes with uh, Whitman Price and Haddad yeah and it's so cool because he says that Schwartzy's playing for a full pardon and um well he he gets Schwartzy gets sat down in that like uh, cage the pod. He pod gets a, yeah. thing and then uh, it's re uh, Killian reveals that he's also trapped both of his friends the pre friends he promised that he wouldn't bring in <laughs> and they're like awkwardly like <laughs> they're like awkwardly almost like upright vertically in the pods but they're like crammed in so and it Yaf looks and so Kota awkward looks like, Yaf and Koda looks like someone's been beating him for the last three hours <laughs> like because he's got the, this look on his face where he's like, you fucking piece of shit, but also, please don't hit me again. <laughs> yeah, like, it's so weird. It, they, it looks so uncomfortable. Because did you notice how he was cocking his head to the side, sort of? Yafet Koto yeah, in this it scene? Seemed, it seemed like both of them were were um, just... The shit was kicked out of both of them. And because they're not Schwartzy, they're normal human beings. They took it, and they took it in stride, you know? I love the detail of the rules of the game. Killian says they have three hours to reach the end of four sections of this former earthquake kind of underground area. There was a big earthquake in 1997. It's revealed the one that remember in the eighties, everyone thought that the big one was coming in LA. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. It never came. I mean, it might still, it might, but, yeah. Who but knows? maybe in 2017. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like w one of the interesting things um, in this, in this scene as they're going to, sorry, did you finish? Did you want to no, explain no, more? Keep, keep, keep um, one of the, one of the interesting things um, in this scene, right when they're going to send Laughlin, Schwartzy and, and Weiss is, um, Schwartzy has his classic line, I'll be back. Yes. And Killian fucking subverts it by being like, only in a rerun. And it's like, that kind of clash makes him such a good villain. Exactly, because he took his catchphrase and flipped it on its head. It, exactly. it used it against him saying, no, you're going to die and you're going to die now. And he goes, go! Yeah, go! Yeah, I, I love, love the go. I do too. Um, the the funny thing about Killian is that he's not. He is to talk in like video game parlance. He is the big boss. Yes, but he's scarier in the sense that like he has this overriding control over part of a really big system yeah. rather than being physically intimidating. Yeah. And that's an interesting contrast to every other villain that we've seen so far. We have Schwartzy as the villain. We have Predator as the villain. We have um, James Earl Jones as the villain as a big snake with yeah. magic. But this is his first sort of like human villain yeah. who's just got the evil face of capitalism. Yeah, ex <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, he shoots all of them down the tube and they go down in the metal pods. I love this scene with their faces being squishy. I I always thought it looked weird and didn't when I was a kid, didn't know really what was happening to their faces. <laughs> well, they're experiencing the G force, G -force where you have to clench your butthole so you don't pass out. <laughs> 
I couldn't clutch my hemorrhoid butthole. <laughs> no, what you have to do is it's not your butthole. But, I mean, it is your butthole, but you have to squeeze your leg muscles. Oh, is it? I thought it was force, clutch your butthole. No, no, it's to force. You do the same thing for to force the blood up no, no, into no, circulation, your, your right? But, actually, your butthole. There is something where you squeeze your butthole. It's with lie detector tests. Oh, because lie detector tests when, when you have the same kind of stress if you clench your asshole at the same time that you're lying or telling the truth to fuck up the test. But yeah, um, I always loved the squishy faces. I thought it was really cool. And when their pods arrive to the bottom, these leather daddies are there to beat them. They're full on like bear daddies <laughs> with like really thick beards. And you could tell that they love nipple play. <laughs> How do you know? I mean, I mean, I could just tell. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dude! When when uh, they get there, and uh, the nice little touch in the in the game show is that the contestants get to pick which stalker comes at which point, or at least to some degree they get to pick which which stalker. And the woman is fucking so excited, and she's like, "Well, my husband and and my son, they all have their uh, you know choices, but I love." Sub Zero, and it's she like, loves her men cuddly. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that was amazing. Um, but the, but the like that was also like a really important thing for me, where it's like, oh dude, like this is what America is sort of like. Like they get like really attached to to crazy things like this. I mean, I get attached to crazy things. I mean, we we're talking about fucking Schwartzy as a podcast, but like. To such a degree where it's like, holy fuck, dude, like you want to murder this guy or these guys. In this scene also, Amber is caught. Okay, so I went back and forth in my mind about Sub-Zero and the portrayal of that character. So this <laughs> oh, the incredibly racist portrayal <laughs> of the character. <laughs> okay, so I wasn't sure if it was racist. No, it's pretty fucking racist. But then Lee was said something really funny. He was like, it is racist, but hockey? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that was such a funny thing to me. When he said that, I was like, oh my god, I can't wait to tell you about this. So, Sub-Zero is like a sumo wrestler stereotype. But he's on ice skates and he's got a hockey stick that's a sword and he walks out and we get our first really amazing, cool stalker. I love all the stalkers. I love the characters of the stalkers I, and all of their powers. I love all the stalkers as well. The weird thing is, OK, for, first of all, the fact that, that that he's credited as Professor Toru Tanaka, that guy. Wow. They call him Professor at one point they in do. the movie. They do call him which Professor. Which is like, I don't know if that was like a fuck up or if they were making reference to him. No, it was like movie. an Easter egg. Like, that's what I feel like it was an Easter egg. He was also in another Schwarzy movie. Which one? Last Action Hero. That's amazing. Yeah. I do remember him from yeah, that movie. Exactly. I remember, it's funny, I remember him as him, as a person more in that movie, but I remember him here as Sub Zero. Of course. Yeah. And Sub Zero has 30 lifetime kills and. He uses his sword hockey stick to chop the gong that he was introduced with in half. Which so point? fucking badass. He is so badass. And he, to me, he is probably the scariest one. I would say that the hockey element is definitely the most menacing. Yeah, it Because was like the weird. ice gives it this layer of, you know, uh, loss like, of control if you don't have skates, you know? Exactly, exactly. Our heroes start running and they're chased by a billboard of Killian that will be important later through these sort of corridors. And they're being led by motorcyclists, the leather daddies. I thought this was cool because it's kind of showing us that, you know, we're making this thing happen in a certain way. It's being sort of directed at all times mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah so yeah it's this element to that it's a show you yeah, know you're they're led being led to the next scene so they can like portray the next uh villain to happen the in i think in this scene or maybe it, it was it's right before they get into the hockey arena um dawson is 
Dawson is talking to, to Jesse, talking to somebody and Jesse Ventura comes in and he like interrupts Jesse Ventura from speaking. Okay. So what happens is Jesse Ventura is giving a sort of locker room play by play and a locker room play by play. And Killian says, you know, he's engaging him in this conversation and then he totally cold shoulders him and he the face that him <laughs> the face that Jesse Ventura makes of disappointment and anger for being cut off is absolutely incredible. The reason Killian cuts Jesse Ventura off is because our runners have made it to the first section. Right, right, exactly, which is the hockey arena, which is a great segue, but at the same time no, no, like the he hasn't even had many lines at this point, and Jesse Ventura has somehow portrayed the the depth at which that hurt him because he used to be the man. He's doing so much face acting, so much face acting, and that fucking wig, dude, that fucking <laughs> wig, <laughs> that red head, outrageous wig that they match the color of his mustache. Too. So awesome. <laughs> The contrast between him wearing that goddamn wig and wearing mostly like light blue outfits. Amazing. People are betting on who will die first and they're on a skating rink and they're at a huge disadvantage because there's just barbed wire everywhere. They're in a cage and there's ice on the ground. So they're slipping and sliding all over the place and Sub-Zero walks in or skates in and just smashes into them, knocking them over like dominoes. Yeah. And the great thing is, this is this was the first movie flub that I ever noticed. Me too. This flub is world famous. Yeah. It's uh, Weiss is headed, slipping, and tr- almost trying to hold himself up, going towards the camera. And just off screen, a stagehand yeah. pops out and catches him just in time. Amazing. I, it was crazy to watch this with, with somebody else that I had. I don't think I've ever spoken to anybody else about this flub besides with you. Uh, so talking to Leah about it, I was like, oh, man, this is this is amazing. Every time a single thing happens during gameplay the woman that chose Sub-Zero gets a prize. Yes, that was such a great touch. I thought it's that like was... in, in, incentivizing like like the crowd and, and stuff. Really cool stuff. Another thing that I loved was the iconic scene of Weiss holding the sword hockey stick. Yeah, as he's getting pushed by um, Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero and the camera's sort of panning with him as he's like getting pushed and pan then and gets scan. Th- thrown. To, yeah, pan and scan. He gets uh, thrown into a hockey net that closes, that closes on, on him, and a, yes, which was really great. Um, and then Schwartzy pulls off the, the barbed wire, goads uh, Sub-Zero into trying to chase him and then wraps it around his neck. And like Holes really hard so that his neck just like it's almost as if his head's gonna fall. But this off. is this is the crazy thing that I noticed this time watching it. If you notice, he grabs onto the thing, dropping the hockey stick, and then he pulls and he falls to the ground and fingers fall down. I was like, whoa, what an outrageously specific detail. It cut through the fingers. That was I cool. thought that was a really cool I touch. That was awesome. I also noticed that for the first time during this watching. Yeah. yeah. Killian, here is Sub Zero. Now, now. Plane Zero. Oh. I love that. I love that. And also, what I, what bothers me about that? How did this get made? Episode was they were like that line doesn't make sense. This is, who cares? It's such a cool line. It's such a cool line. The way he delivers that nonsensical line makes so much sense for the way that somebody who isn't a native English speaker would say totally, something. Totally, totally. Because maybe in his language, he hears sub-zero and he's like, oh, well, he's just a regular zero. Yeah, and he yeah. thinks that's so clever. Maybe that makes sense. I feel like that's a joke that our father Tata yeah, would Tata make. Tata would make. The Tata towel. Uh, and then you get the cool thing where they're both walking away, Yafet and fucking Schwartzy low-five each other. I was like... So cool. Low fives must make a comeback. Intercut with a nation in shock. Everyone is totally shocked that a a fucking stalker died. Yeah. That never happens. Yeah. 
And the and the lengths they go to uh, to show people like uh, Jesse Ventura, like ex- sort of exploring the inner politics of the show when when a stalker dies, it's like really interesting. And then wh- what's his name? Sorry, go ahead. Killian, ever the pro, is like people. This is shocking, I know, but we'll cut to commercials now and and then he's doing damage control on the phone and he's like well i know a stalker's never died but it was bound to happen and not just that he says well it's a contact sport <laughs> which i was just like, like fully justifying this terrible violent horrible tragedy you know i mean the guy is a stalker he's a piece of shit he's like killing people for a he, living but, but but he's part of that system too is exactly the thing. like he's a person who's brought in in the same way that like wrestlers are are people who are like enjoying their passion or whatever and they're just exploited people as well they're just meat oh man he, where he's like you you ain't gonna get that on on gilligan's island yeah you know gilligan's island like the person doesn't know what gilligan's island i thought that was a great touch i like that so much that's the second uh joke like that in this movie because at the end he says spock mick fleetwood says beam me up spock no he says something about spock yeah yeah yeah. i forget but it but it is something that the kids don't understand even though like star trek is like a cultural touchstone exactly no one gives a shit about gilligan's island next a middle-aged bald man is choosing the next stalker and he can't pick because oh dude you mean fucking leon that's what that character's name is he looks like sammy jenkins (laughs) Um, steven tobolowski can't choose a stalker leon is so excited He's, he's so, so excited fucking... about like the whole thing. <laughs> it's so funny because he's just like, I don't know, I don't know, buzzsaw. And it's like, <laughs> like, what about Dynamo? And then, and then, like, he it's revealed that he gets both of them. Okay, so this is so like a real reality show because they have so many gimmicks of like. Oh. Killian's just like, well, if you can't choose one, then choose both. Yeah, just like, uh, what's it called? Uh, your boy Rue fucking choosing two queens to stay. That this was is- such a disappointment. RuPaul, no good. You couldn't, you should have just chosen one queen for <laughs> season four All Stars finale. Anyway, I digress. Um, also, Buzzsaw is amazing because he looks like a psycho and is wearing a fucking mesh shirt again. What is with dudes in mesh shirts? Okay, so... That's Buzz- like the fourth movie somebody's wearing a mesh shirt in. Buzzsaw looks like a like a jacked CrossFit version of... of What's-his-face mesh shirt from Commando? <laughs> Bennett? Benedict? Or a Bennett, Bennett, yeah. So we get introduced to Buzzsaw and Dynamo, yeah. who continue this tradition of amazing stalker characters. This is so fucking cool. Buzza is a full on bleached haired, like Hulk like Roy- Hogan type. Yeah, roided out. <laughs> Yeah. Like it, that part where he lifts the fucking motorcycle, motorcycle. over his head and it's just like, <laughs> like, what is up, dude? Like, holy shit. And it just seems like his entire character is just like, <laughs> when whenever wrestlers did that, like Macho Man Randy oh, Savage, yeah. I thought like, oh my God, isn't that how aneurysms are formed? <laughs> Yeah, just like like you ain't going nowhere. Where it's just like their traps have veins in them. So Bussa and Dynamo are amazing. Bussa is a a chainsaw guy who whose chainsaws can rip through steel, and Dynamo is a fucking fat guy who had with like a random light mohawk, like a, a mohawk that's not a real mohawk, but it, like. I, really, I also really wanted to sing the song. I really wanted to yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the fucking like outfit that he's wearing that just has like Christmas lights coming out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Dynamo is my favorite stalker. If I if I would lived in this world, I would choose Dynamo to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> because you want him to sing. <laughs> I love the singing so much. Yeah, yeah. 
I, I and okay, so can I flip you another? How did you guess? Please. How did you guess? The guy who played Dynamo is <laughs> a professional baritone opera singer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, dude. Why the fuck not? I love that they used the choices, that. dude. The choices. <laughs> Holy shit. And so the first time we encounter Dynamo, he shoots f- thunder at. <laughs> oh, he yeah, shoots he shoots lightning. He shoots fucking Terminator Thunder out of him. <laughs> he shoots Terminator Thunder in- into. Uh, Please clap if you love Dynamo. <laughs> Please clap. <laughs> Please clap. <laughs> This movie predicted so much. <laughs> Please clap. Killian is informed that the ratings have gone up eight. No, scratch that. Nine points. Oh, man. And they hired a big, big movie star, Arnold Schwarzenegger, to take my place. And we know how that turned out. The ratings went right down the tubes. And he's living for Schwartzy. He's like, I love you, Ben Richards. Um, Is it at this point, like right after that, where... Uh, they catch Amber in true reality TV fashion. They have another twist. This is uh, RuPaul brings back a, an eliminated queen. Um, our favorite queen, Maria Amber, <laughs> Amber is caught and th- what they do to smear her. Dude, I was going to talk to you about this. The description. Go ahead. Go ahead. The description of how Amber is smeared. So the announcer guy is saying she had sometimes two, sometimes three, three lovers, lovers in, in a year. year. I'm like, one year? Whoa, and the, dude. the added touch of showing the on, showing on screen the announcer guy while he's saying it instead of just leaving it being a disembodied voice was such a weird idiosyncratic touch. Bizarre. Um. So yeah. So they slut shame Amber, even though she really hasn't had sex with that many people. But also, three is not that many. Be- like in, like I was like. In a year, I guess, like that—that that seems pretty normal, no? That like, seems totally normal. Totally normal. Like it's like even like oh, in one day, like I would never say that to somebody or about somebody. Like I wouldn't judge somebody for that. But like, but a year but a is year like year is like so weirdly like specific and odd. In true Amber fashion, she says. Go ahead, tell some lies about me. She's so defiant in this moment. Like, it's like you're at a total disadvantage. Totally. And you're about to get shot in a fucking pod down a tube. Yeah. Where leather daddies are going to greet you. (laughs) Uh, And you're still so defiant. You're just like, no, like you're lying. And he's like, we don't tell lies here. Yeah. He's so like additionally flippant to her. Yeah. She, she's, she's really cool. They strap her in and send her down the tube. Meanwhile, Weiss looks at the relays in this basement kind of like... 80s hacking. Oh, this was... This movie was such 80s hacking. The uplink. Yeah. Just like, oh, I have to make these these squares a a tube of some kind. It's like, what? What is this? The the 80s thought that the word uplink would be important in the future. Oh, dude. I gotta get to the uplink. Uh, And, and, uh... Jam the signal. We got to jam the signal. Uh, and and then Schwartzy's like, I'm going to jam that signal up your ass. Come on, yeah, let's Sh- keep moving. Schwartzy's not thinking big picture here because yeah. these guys are like, we got to find the relays to get the codes to the resistance so that we can intercept the network and stop television from happening. But but this is this is also an interesting point to make that... These are these are the characters that are given uh, such importance and such depth through actions that have little to do with themselves, which is like a noble and interesting. This is what I mean by a noble and interesting thing. This is what I mean by like the Demolition Man comparison, where it's like there's no need to make these characters this way. You could give all of the virtue to Schwartzy. Schwartzy. You could yeah. just be like, oh yeah, this guy. But he is like just still consistently a pretty selfish dude. Even though he goes through a change throughout the movie to like want to to help, like, the, resistance. help the resistance, that only happens later on in the movie when the two characters, 
I don't know if I should go into that yet. If we should go into spoiler territory. Um, well, the B plot of this movie with the resistance is really interesting because it gives this added element of virtuousness to what is happening in this movie. And even though it's tertiary, it gives it kind of like a more, I don't know, noble yeah. cause. Yeah. And and the fact that it's divided up into four separate characters who all have different perspectives on it. Uh, Maria... Uh, who's like an insider. Amber, Amber, yeah, is an insider who works there, who is disillusioned from the inside. These two are disillusioned from the outside. And Schwartzy almost parallels the stalkers in a way of working for the state. Right? Exactly. Which is like an interesting... He's a di- tool. Yeah, interesting di- d- dynamics that parallel each other to get to the same uh, end goal. I agree completely. And the end goal is really this kind of introspective cultural criticism yeah, you know yeah totally which is makes this movie more interesting than just your regular kind of your regular sort of b movie yeah well yeah i i think so too with a loose plot and no yeah where it's just like it has it has no uh uh it doesn't bother with with uh a certain elements it's just like carrying forward instead it gives like random details yeah this movie's no raw deal oh fuck raw deal fuck I that movie. fucking hate raw fuck deal raw so deal. much uh, i mean i'll still watch it every couple of years when i forget how bad it was but um fuck raw deal buzzsaw and dynamo come riding in on the motorcycle and the little car and amber finds our heroes right then not long after our heroes get intercepted by our two stalkers Schwartzy tries to hit Buzzsaw with a metal pipe and the pipe gets chopped. And Schwartzy does the amazing face acting of looking at the chopped pipe. They're riding circles around them and they separate our heroes. Yeah. Yafit and Schwartzy go in one camp and Weiss and, and Amber get chased by Dynamo. Yeah. Um, and the funny thing about this this line, right before this line happens, um, Schwartzy also says to Amber, you see this camera? I could strangle you in front of the audience at home. And I was like, Jesus Christ, again with the strangling. Anyway. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, neck <laughs> stuff in this movie. Uh, but they split apart. Weiss is determined to find this network uplink because the resistance has been looking for years. And Amber wants to leave. I really noticed how much she was referring to him directly by name when she just met him. So much. I know she called him Weiss like seven times. At at one point, she does a a line which is great: "Is hey man, what are you doing?" I love that. When when she said man specifically, I was like, "This is awesome." But yeah, she she said his name fully as though she knew him, and it was awesome. I loved it. Dude, Yafet Koto gets injured by Buzzsaw in this next scene. He gets chopped in the midsection. Yeah, dude. So Buzzsaw's making hilarious faces. Um, <laughs> and Schwartzy, he like ties a rope around Schwartzy and then Back to the Future threes him. Yeah, oh, where he drags him on the motorcycle, which would fucking would be brutal, dude. Like dude, your skin would just be yeah, like just totally be like, like you would like be have exposed bone. Yeah, that like leotard thing would not fucking save him. I felt a little bit like it was a little forced that that Yafet would sacrifice himself in the way that he did. It was noble. It was cool. But I feel like. I have to justify it. I have to do some mental gymnastics to be like, oh yeah, he, he this guy is the guy who can do this without us. Like, and I was a bit disappointed because Yafe Koto. Well, in, and it's the trope of like the black, black guy, guy sacrificing yeah, yeah, for himself sure. for for sure. Schwartzy is able to catch the rope onto like a hook that flips Buzzsaw off of the motorcycle. Yeah, and he thinks that Buzzsaw's dead, so he approaches him. And in slasher film style, Buzzsaw whips his saw up at Schwartzy. Also, I like the parallels of of Amber and Weiss being sort of the brains and Schwartzy and, and Yafet being sort of muscle guys. I agree. I agree um, with that. It's an interesting dynamic because it's like, mm. oh yeah, these guys are are... Of course, this person who's worked for this company and this like wiener smart guy are the like brains like in in sort of like stereotypical um signifiers of those things i wanted to ask you 
the showdown between Schwartzy and Buzzsaw, where they're sort of battling it out with strength who can push the saw into who yeah did you believe that schwartzy could like i don't know man strength in this (laughs) guy who could lift a fucking motorcycle (laughs) the guy who's clearly so roided out so roid rage right now because schwartzy schwartzy's strong but this guy's like thick like yeah this dude i think this dude would have chopped schwartzy's balls and not the other way around yeah so schwartzy chops his balls but um, <laughs> the way he dies is amazing. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he says, I-, I love the saw. The saw's part of me. I'm going to make it a part of you, yeah. which is something no one ever would say ever. <laughs> it's so aligned that like a guy writing this movie thought of it at three in the morning and, <laughs> and then just left it in. And was like, oh man, that's great. That's that's great. <laughs> As he's falling asleep yeah. again. Weiss gets fucking electrocuted. In the most unceremonious way, this dude dies. They really did Weiss dirty. Um, but it fucking sucks. Not before he commits to Amber's memory, the uplink code. Yeah. So, you know, he is the unsung hero of this movie. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, And Dynamo is still fucking chasing them. Uh, so Dynamo... Terminator electrocutes... Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Weiss, Weiss and then and then soft, peripherally soft electrocutes <laughs> fucking Amber with like a yellow one yeah because he doesn't want to kill her I guess he wants to rape her <laughs> like that's like outrageous the I, whole time okay it's like, so he, it was like very much shown that like he wanted to just rape her the whole time the whole time dude. it was like just like uh, wh- uh, wow like, also on TV like they're like, gonna show this exactly Whoa. I was like I guess they show murder on TV I mean I guess like they're supposed to you know this is a brutal society, but I'm still like, man, writing this into a script seems so misogynistic to me. Yeah, it's like weird, like, I guess like, like why would, if he's supposed to kill her, why is his thought like, I'm going to rape, like, you're on television. But he wants it, but he he is an evil guy. It's not like he's like, I don't, we're not meant to get off on, like, him wanting to rape her. I get what you're saying, but like, I feel like, um... I feel like that there is like, it's, it's, it is weird though. It is weird. So Schwartzy comes to the rescue and he fucking lures Dynamo away from, uh, from Maria. And he says, follow me light bulb. Oh, come on Christmas, Christmas tree. tree. And it was just like, wow. They're like jokes that Tata would find oh, funny. Oh, totally. Totally. <laughs> like, Tata. I still it, love it. I it still love it. so much like a line written for a person whose language whose first language is not English. Totally, totally. Um t- tell us tell us just how how Dynamo gets defeated and then I'm going to just <laughs> I I want to I want to just do my impression of Dynamo so badly, dude. Okay. So Dynamo just <laughs> follows Schwartzy up like some uneven terrain. <laughs> the most and unceremonious, <laughs> also the most unceremonious way to get out. And flips his like little crappy electric car <laughs> over and he's like, ah, oh, cut to he commercial. Goes, he goes, God, God, go to commercial. I have no power. <laughs> it's like weirdly sad and weirdly like pathetic in a way where it's like, oh you're a stalker (laughs) you know like that's how i would feel if i was like a little kid in this in this world of brutality you'd be disappointed yeah you'd be like disappointed by this it's like ew you're a stalker (laughs) go to commercial it's like where is he from like he sounds like he's like from scandinavia like a scandinavian country (laughs) go to commercial (laughs) <laughs> he does sound like he has a really like like a Swedish, Swedish accent. accent yeah, it's, it's so funny how like willing the '80s was to cast so many people with accents. You never see people with accents no. and things. No, it's you all see, white people. Now it's all white people like doing America. bad accents. Yeah, yeah. It's all like British people doing American <laughs> accents or, or, Australian, or Australian, Australian people, people doing, doing, doing American accents. Okay, so can we talk about when? Um, British people do American accents and they get a curvy mouth. Curvy, so many curvy mouths. Because 
in order for their face to make the American accent, they have to contort it into this curvy mouth. Yeah, because they like we noticed it. Remember when we were on set, but we saw that sur- such a Serbian guy. <laughs> And we started speaking to him. He looked basically like a cross between a Ser- he looked like a Serbian Tom Noonan. Yeah, that's, that's what he looked like. That's true. And then when you introduced yourself, we were you were both you were like, oh man, that guy's so Serbian. And I saw him and I was like, oh shit, yeah, he must be so Serbian. He and must then, be like a Zoran or yeah. a or a Dan. Yeah, and it was like like of a certain era yeah 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 um and then and then all of a sudden old started, school serbia yeah and all of a sudden you started talking to him and he was speaking english and his face didn't look Ser- as serbian no, anymore exactly totally. it looked different and and that that does happen like when you're con- when british people can curve their mouths to make different sounds it's because they make certain sounds with the curvature of what they're like they yell at schwarzy to kill dynamo the audience is like kill him and he he goes in keeping with his sort of like boy scout nature he takes a pipe and just lodges dynamo into the vehicle so he can't get out which is so cool and he says i wouldn't kill a helpless piece of shit like you <laughs> schwartzy and amber move on oh also this this scene is when fireball fucking gets called down and he's what is up with, with his, his dad bod shirt and dad bod? I loved it. Him being like a normal guy with just like three stripes of white hair. And I his, love it. I love it. Oh. He had such a cool look and he was he like, did such a cool look. He was, he was so cool. I love fireball. Yeah. Fi- fireball. <laughs> I can't wait to talk oh, to you I about that. I can't wait. I can't okay. wait. Schwartzy goes to Yafet and Yafet's dying. This is such a sad scene. I'm so glad they gave Yafet Koto a ceremonious death in this movie. Yeah. Because he's bleeding out and he asks about Weiss and Amber just like shakes her head and, you know, he knows that he's dead. But she's like, but he gave me the uplink code. And so both of their deaths had meaning, you know? They did. The, and and this is the interest. This is something that I noticed uh, watching it this time was that their death transforms the importance of the rest of mix crew into being much more important yes. than I noticed before. Because before it's just like, oh, these guys are just helping Schwartzy. Schwartzy's the cool guy. Or <laughs> yeah, whatever. Exactly, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but like, it's interesting how, how <laughs> because they're still there in the background, they get a, this added level of their importance. We get to know them, the resistance through them. Thus, the resistance is still built up as, as this new character. But at the same time, we know them. Exactly. Yafet tells Schwartzy that the rebels have an underground broadcast system and that it's located in the fourth quadrant of the, this underground compartment. Which makes me think that Yafet and Weiss got captured on, on purpose, purpose. in order to infiltrate. Fully, fully. And it's really cool. That's It makes no sense, but it's really fucking cool. Totally makes no sense, but it's really cool. Yeah. So his dying wish is for them to get the uplink code to the resistance. Yeah. And Schwartzy doesn't want to let them down. Yeah. And then he dies and Schwartzy feels so guilty. Damon calls Schwartzy on a private Skype and he's like, <laughs> he's like, hey, uh, so uh, you want to be a stalker? Because uh, we can you make got, you a good deal. You we got can... talent, kid. Yeah. He's like, I know talent when I see it. And I really hope that you wrote, wrote down this next line that Schwartzy delivers. Oh. You cold bladder bastard. I'll tell you what I think of it. I live to see you eat that contract. But I hope you leave enough room for my fist because I'm going to ram it into your stomach and break your goddamn spine. Ah! <laughs> And then throws the camera. Can I ask you something? I I really I really want you to answer me honestly, please. If you were Schwartzy in this situation, what would you do? Ooh, I think I might I might take the opportunity to be a stalker. I think I would too. I because think I would like too. Clearly, very gifted at killing people. <laughs> But like, I like, I mean, Sans the sort of like, oh, he's a Boy Scout. He's like cool. He's like the main character. Like in real life, I was like in that moment, I was like, man, like, what would I do? Weiss and Laughlin are dead. Yeah. Like I can get a deal for Maria. Yeah. You know, 
yeah, bring me on, sign me on. Yeah, it would be. It's weird. Like I don't, you have well, leverage. Yeah, I in know, that situation. I, like I don't want to be some guy who's like a piece of shit and like, but like I feel like there would be, like I'd be scared. You know what I mean? But instead, what he does is so badass. It he is. smashes his camera and he's basically shit all over them. He's like, they now know that they're dealing with a loose cannon. So they're trying to do other damage control. Like Damon's not happy because Attorney General Jeff Sessions is on the phone. Wait, wait, wait. Killian. Killian. What did I say? Damon. I think you're combined. Yeah, by- Damon Killian. Is that his name? Damon Killian. Really? Yeah. No way. It's Damon he's, I Killian. I think he's just refer. I think at the... Whoa, it is Damon Killian. Damon Killian gets a phone call from Attorney, <laughs> Attorney General Jeff Sessions. <laughs> <laughs> I had to say my joke I know, again. I know, I know. It cuts to the audience and they're cheering for Fireball. And he shoots some amazing flames into a semicircle. And then he shoots cardboard cutouts. I love this. It's such a crappy thing that is actually so cool. Like, you think about it and you're like, why would anyone ever do that? But then you see it and you're like, oh man, I loved seeing that (laughs) flamethrower burn that cardboard cutout. Cut to Jesse Ventura, who's getting nostalgic. This is another quick little economic scene that, you know just tells us he's reliving the glory days in his mind by looking at a poster of himself. That was such a weird, like, uh, scene to see. Like, him dressed, again, in that blue outfit with the red gloves and and looking at himself, like, longingly. I was like, this is weirdly specific to this movie and weirdly specific to this character. And so sad. Like, pathetic. Pathetic. We cut to Mrs. McCarlyle, super fan, of Running Man. And Killian's asking her who he she thinks is going to make the next kill. And she thinks about it real hard. And then that old lady says, I think it's going to be Ben Richards. <laughs> ben Richards. Ben- <laughs> <laughs> I love the, the way that and then she's like... Well, okay, <laughs> what the audience at home didn't see is how good a face impression you did of that old lady. Oh, yeah. Ben Richards. <laughs> <laughs> that boy is one mean motherfucker. It's like she she's like kind of startled at herself and kind of doing this thing of like, ooh, I'm being so bad by wanting Ben Richards. <laughs> the character quirk of making her like that to me makes me love Mrs. McCarlyle so, so much. Awesome. She's so good. Uh and then and then that guy, it cuts to the like slums, and that one guy uh who's like placing a bed and he's like Hunter on Ben Richards and, and the, the bookies, bookies are like, what the fuck do we do? But they quickly adjust because they're like, put Richards on that chalkboard. I love that. I thought that on that iPad. Um, I I love I love that touch. I think that was cool. Fireball intercepts Richards and Amber in the underground ruins, and he's chasing them, shooting fire at them. The fire looked so cool. Yeah, it looked really cool. He's also constantly manhandling her in the scene. I don't know if you noticed that, but he's like literally like throwing her around totally but she has a really cool character quirk moment where she freaks out at the fire and she starts screaming in spanish and i really think she ad-libbed that oh i I think so too i'm so glad because again she takes this nothing sort of like bullshit tropey character and fleshes it out in such an amazing way yeah for sure what was funny about this scene too is that they're constantly sort of in in wide shots fireball is getting shit thrown at him and it's kind of like uh, ow you know like just like crappily throwing something like a normal human being would yeah react. it's totally He's- like mario throwing barrels at like yeah. king kong <laughs> donkey kong throwing barrels at mario <laughs> <laughs> got it so, so wrong. wrong um but yeah um it, it was so weird because it's it just like he just looks like he's like dodging he's not even dodging it cool it's just like a dad kind of like well it's how you would dodge it in real life in real life but totally i guess those barrels are filled with gasoline because gas explodes and then he just kind of casually walks through it yeah he's unaffected by the influx of flames which i thought was cool because he would probably have a flame retardant like flame retardant suit yeah um there's a tense moment where fireball is looking for schwartzy and amber has run off on her own she finds skeletons that are fucking whitman price and haddad she finds their like 
name tags yeah. name tags again name tags in this movie like in predator oh so totally cool. totally um, and it's revealed that the rumors of their freedom was uh deeply exaggerated with their deep fake cover-ups yeah i mean the, the, what was great about it too is that um she's like she's last like, last season's winners and he's like no last season's losers and, and schwartzy like- schwartzy jumps from the ceiling and rips out his fuel line and i love that they didn't think that people would understand that so they added the line of my gasoline <laughs> yeah 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 my, my fuel line or my gas line my gas line and then he, oh my god, oh my! Even I kind of rolled my eyes at this line, but he goes, "What a hothead!" When he throws the the flare that he got. First, he says, "How about a light?" Which is great. I love that line. Where did he get the flare? Though? I don't know where he got the flare from. The hothead line. I really, I rolled my eyes at yeah, the hothead yeah, line. Yeah, yeah. Captain Freedom, Jesse Ventura's stalker character, gets called into wardrobe, and he's pissed he's so mad the slums are cheering for richards the studio audience is upset the network staff is in total disbelief and shock and jesse ventura barges in to the network office in like full like crappy like (laughs) robot gear yeah it's so crappy it was so crappy even for the the show it's crappy but they made it like that on purpose they made it like that on purpose because he's like showing up he's playing up the campiness of oh totally the costumes in this world yeah and he's like we're gladiators you know that that sort of weird like machismo but it has to be noble machismo yeah because he says that there's honor in the sport it's great it's It's really great because he's ideologically tied to the sport which is also tied to an ideology and what was amazing is when fucking um dawson uh tells tells sven to get rid of him and he's like get out of here Get him out of here! And what's the matter with you? The steroids make you deaf? Get him out of here! Fucking awesome line. I love that too because it kind of gives Sven cause later to sort of turn on Killian. Totally. And Sven doesn't even kick him out. He just like li- like puts his hands up and is like, "Well, yeah." Sven you- is like, "You know, I'm. I've worked with you, dude. Like yeah. we're friends. Like, like don't what make is this? me. Don't make me embarrass you and me. Yeah, exactly. Because I like- love that he acted so much with just his body. Yeah. Because later Sven talks and you cannot understand a word, <laughs> dude. Oh, I wanted to talk because what is he? He just it just sounds like it sounds like Dolph Lundgren spitting marbles out of his mouth. <laughs> I got to score some steroids. Like, whoa, dude! What the fuck happened? <laughs> Okay, it was so funny because I was watching it and I was like, what the fuck did he say? And I didn't have ca- <laughs> captions. I, I didn't have captions so, but I really wanted to know what he said. So I was considering briefly downloading the movie on Torrent and then just finding like one with like the captioning. Backstage, Kurt Fuller is uploading Richard's image to fucking the database to create the deep fake fight with Jesse Ventura. I I think that this is really cool. Like that idea is really awesome where you can just like, yeah, we'll fake it. We have the technology to just fake it. And we do have the technology. We do. Yeah. I mean, it's not like, like, not like that, but like, yeah, it'll fully be like that in a couple of years. Like they weren't that far off. Exactly. 2017 isn't that far off from deep fakes to like pull that fucking thing. Deep fake like, I remember actually believing when I was younger that that was the most unbelievable part of this movie. To flash forward the future where, like, you know, you've got, like... We're in the 80s future, dude. So weird it's and great. scary. Basically, they're putting Captain Freedom, uh, a.k.a. Jesse Ventura, to fight, fake fight uh, Ben Richards. Yeah. So they superimpose Ben Richards face on like an old fight. I'm assuming, right? Like they just got stock footage. Yeah, totally. Which I thought was another really interesting way to kind of undercut Jesse Ventura's innocent idealism. Yeah. You know, like he's like, I believe in this sport and they're like, fuck you. We're going to use deep fake question. Did they ever really like answer what happened to captain? No, they don't ever answer the Captain question, Freedom? the eternal question of Captain Freedom's That's cool. Fate. I like that. I like, I, that. I like that too, because he's like, really it was just like the movie almost went, fuck you yeah. to Jesse Ventura. Yeah, for sure. Um, so they get to the underground 
People's Network, Schwartzy and Amber, they get captured by Mitt Fleetwood. Schwartzy's bemoaning the fact that Mick didn't help them out, but they said that they couldn't risk getting caught by the government. Yeah. Amber tells them that Weiss and Laughlin are dead, but they didn't die for nothing. She's got the uplink code. And they're interrupted by the show that's coming back on. So Killian says the remaining runners have entered into the final quad and deep fake comes on with Schwartzy getting tossed into the fighting ring with Amber. Yeah. Amber and gets immediately like strangled and thrown. Her into neck broken. Broke. Yeah. Again, like, with the neck shit, breaking. neck breaking. Yeah. What is up with it? Um, although I will say that the Captain Freedom and Schwartzy fight between them is like pretty on point, like realistic. I, feel I like love the hair ripping the out. The hair ripping out. So what happens is um, Schwartzy's head is grabbed by Jesse Ventura and Schwartzy's so strong that he pulls away his arm from his hair, ripping his own hair out with Jesse Ventura's hand. It's such a badass move it is a to put cool, in a movie cool badass move okay so captain freedom wins because he fucking impales schwartzy on a spiky cage and his face is all covered in blood and he's like ah! yeah <laughs> it's yeah. so it looks like a like a uh, actual deep fake because it was looks looks like a face of schwartzy rendered on a person on a per- who person. would act differently than schwartzy would yeah, totally. so he died in a different way than schwartzy yeah, would have sure, and sure. you feel the kind of uncanny valley of the deep fakeness <laughs> um but i like this scene when because uh obviously amber gets the idea like this is great like we're dead we're we're out of here we don't have to do anything anymore we can go anywhere we, can we go want anywhere we want and he's like are you kidding like they're not gonna let us out of this fucking police state alive alive like, so schwartz he's like this is schwartz's moment where he switches to the side of the resistance because exactly. he realizes again selfishly that no longer can his freedom depend on just being anonymous yeah. now he everyone knows him yeah and he can't blend into the crowd yeah, so be, being a loner and being a libertarian isn't gonna work so he has to go full socialist <laughs> he has to go full anarcho-syndicalist um but also he has the line which is great uh which is criticize sort of criticizing mick and his leadership tactics he goes they need a leader they need experience and it's like but I feel like this is self-serving because he's so self-serving. Kind it's of like, trying to whoa, sell himself. Dude, like, he's like, "What? You want to join now, yeah, buddy? Like, come on! You think um, I'm gonna trust you?" Killian considers this ending a success, and the credits are rolling, and everyone in the room is really bummed out because all these people just died, and their show is like, you know, kind of been really shaken, you know. Yeah. But Killian's like, "No, we got the fucking ratings. That's yeah. all." We, he's like Trump, man. He's like, "It's all about the ratings." Fully, fully. It's like I got. It's like Trump doesn't care that everyone hates him. He's just like, no. People are listening to me. Yeah, it doesn't really matter at this point. Like, it's like any publicity is good publicity, right? Cut to the resistance getting ready. Oh, I love the resistance getting ready. And yeah. Schwartzy and Amber are now out of their runner leotards and they're dressed in their 80s cool. commando badass uniform. She's got such a cool outfit. She's Her got outfit such a cool, really cool vest. Oh, yeah. Love that vest. Um, and then she has the unedited footage and Schwartz like, where were you keeping that? And she's like, none of your business. Oh, like, that was such a weird. <laughs> it's like, how did she have time to put the disc in her vagina when she was getting captured by that guy in that scene? That yeah. doesn't make any no, sense. No, for sure. She wouldn't have thought to put that disc in her vagina. The dancers are in the studio dancing to the out- outro music and Schwartz is armed and heading in. The resistance is uploading the uplink code. It's all intercut together. And... Um, Killian is on stage doing his outro. People are calling in, asking where they can donate to the dead stalkers families. I thought this was like the, a really the, cool the Patreon to exactly. He tells him about the Patreon. He um, tells him about the Kickstarter started for, for fucking buzzsaw and fireball. Yeah. Um, what was really hilarious is when uh, they, the resistance takes control of the TV and puts up Killian is lying to you. The amazing thing about this is that I was like, well, I was talking to Lee about this and I was like, oh my God, it's like a YouTube conspiracy video. It totally looks like a YouTube conspiracy video and it would be totally being broadcast live on YouTube. And also 
um, you could like donate and like it, it, like I totally see how this could work in our world. Oh, totally! R- a Running Man remake would be fucking awesome because you would have people, you'd have the the like comment section scrolling, and you could just have so much shittiness happen. On totally, there. all that weird like internet toxicity. Yeah, and this movie is all about like you know that masculine kind of like rage and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But um, Lee said. When I said the YouTube conspiracy video, he was like, <laughs> "It's uh, they're Killian truthers." That's what he called them, and I was like, "Ah, oh, that's amazing! That's so good." His name is Lee. Goddammit! Can I also point out that the text on the screen is also a fucking meme, dude? Yeah. Oh, Killian yeah. Killian is lying Killian to you. Is, lying is a to meme. You. It is a meme. It fully is a meme. We should put that up. Oh, it fully is a meme. Um, uh, we should uh, we should put that on like a social. We should we should try and make that a thing. I one hundred percent agree with that's, you. That's so true. So you know they release this unedited footage, which at this point, why would anyone have any reason to believe that? undoctored footage like you know like that could just be doctored, doctored as well as well yeah absolutely. you know so they show schwartzy being a good guy See, and so presumably but, now everybody loves and believes that schwartzy is not the butcher of bakersfield but, but it's not that it's not that okay what what i think gets them to believe isn't the fact that it's unedited it's the fact that it's unedited and then they see him after they've it's shown that he's died that's or true quote unquote died right? i didn't think of that that's it's a not, very good point it's not necessarily oh yeah like like you know you know oh we're gonna believe everything but but it's the fact that like oh he's actually here we're actually seeing him right now dude the backstage crew is like confused about where the hell this resistance footage is coming from and Dweezil barges in with this gang of misfits and he's like, don't touch that dial, oh, which is an homage to Frank Zappa. Yeah, totally, totally. And then we get to... Um, oh, can I just say something? Yeah. I really like that initial helicopter scene a lot. And apparently whoever made this movie did as well, because I love that they showed it twice. Yeah. They just show the full scene. They show it three like, times. Three times, yeah. yes. Um... I love it too. Even though it's like really cheap, it's like like anytime you show reshow footage or reshow footage like in a different context, and you're like, how did they get these angles? I'm like, it's kind of cheap, but I like this. Um, Guards are shooting all over the place, and Schwartz is like in his true hero fashion, get the people out. Yeah, yeah, always the good guy trying to save people. Um, interspliced with uh, uh, Amber going through the hallway and runs into fucking. Um, Dynamo. Dynamo again and has such a weird line but it's pretty good um, uh, where he's like you thought it was pretty funny out there why aren't you laughing why aren't you laughing like what was that accent well I think that and then he- she was like because there's nothing funny about a there's nothing funnier than a dickless moron with a battery up his ass and then he says I'll, I'll show, show you, you who's dickless, dickless. and it's like so I think this guy's an incel because he's speaking <laughs> in like incel speak, you know, like he's like, I'm so tough and like have a dick and like, yeah. I'm gonna, yeah, he's threatening her with rape, but he's really like, he really is like very, you know, like, uh, he's so humiliated in that moment of like, yeah. you thought that was pretty funny, didn't you? Yeah. It's like, dude, no one cares. Like, and then died you just in, did a stupid thing and, and died. died in his underwear, which yeah. is like. It is tidy whities because pre- he gets electrocuted from a water main sprinkler, sprinkler system. Yeah, it's a sprinkler system. Yeah, she yeah. shoots at a sprinkler system, which is like that's and he terrible. gets electrocuted. That's terrible. Like that's such a flaw in the design of the costume. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make any sense, yeah. but the mohawk, dude, the fucking plastic mohawk. <laughs> oh, I love the plastic so mohawk. Like- oh, Schwartzy runs in. And points the gun at Killian and is like, hello, cutie pie. Hello, cutie pie. One of us is in deep trouble. Which he is, mirrors the scene from the beginning, which is so cool. That was great. And One of like, us is in really big, big trouble. trouble. And that's that's an interesting thing that, like, again, seemingly doesn't get credit. Because I didn't know this movie was is kind of not one of the good ones you know for i was reading that too this movie is not one of the good ones like it's not considered in like schwartzy pantheon yeah 
Which I totally disagree with. Of course. With. It's like, why is Raw Deal in there? <laughs> it's just fucking it's not in memeing there. hard on Raw Deal. Oh, fuck Raw Deal. Um, Killian is so relieved to see Sven. And he's like, ah, oh, well, you know, I guess you thought you were pretty cool, Schwartzy, but Sven's here. And then Sven is now a fellow comrade. Oh, man, that was awesome. Well, Sven, with a name like Sven. <laughs> Sven Marble Mouth something that we don't know. <laughs> so Marble Mouth said. I got to score some steroids. And, uh, and then he leaves. And well, did you find out what he said? How no, you no, no. What he said? I, I don't want to find out. We'll find out next episode. <laughs> It'll be an Easter egg in, uh, in the next episode. I got to score some steroids. Killian is he starts bargaining oh yeah he starts say, and then he starts the, the saying the lines uh this is television it has nothing to do with people they the the people they love sports they love wrestling they love violence what do we do we give them what they want which is like fucked that's such a like uber dismissive capitalistic way of looking at a human being but that's what that is what we do it's it's unfortunate but that is fucked he says Americans love game shows, wrestling, violence, and we give the people what, what they want. And Schwartzy turns that ideology on him because he goes, well, I haven't been in show business a very long time, but I'm a quick learner. But I'm a quick learner. Nice. Nice. And he fucking straps. That was really good, too. I like that impression. He straps Killian into a pod. Yeah in order to eventually shoot him down the tube. And Which he's going to give the people what he thinks they want. Yeah, for sure. For I love sure. that. So Killian goes, you bastard, drop dead. And Schwartzy gives kind of like a weird line. I don't do requests. I don't do requests. I love like, it. I don't care. It, it no, makes no I, sense, but I love it. <laughs> it's also because it's filmed to be so badass but it feels like it's just not an American sensibility. It's like a total like Eastern European sensibility. Yeah, yeah. And they just leave it in. Yeah, it's great. It's great. The, there was, was it ad libbed? Like maybe it doesn't seem like that was written. Maybe Schwartzy shoots down Killian at what seems like an extra fast speed. Yeah. It's like, and how was this made Killian's face gets really squishy, <laughs> which makes me think like, was Schwartzy controlling the speed with something? I don't was think so. Was there a lever? I think maybe the revolution set it up, I guess. Or like, because he's weaker than the other people, he's oh, just like he's more like squishy. <laughs> so he gets extra squishy in the pot effect, which was done so well and looked so good. Yeah. That all, everything to do with the tubes and the pods looked amazing. <laughs> Killian gets shot out so hard that he flies into that sign from yeah, the beginning of the billboard. Yeah, a billboard of himself. Of himself yeah, and which explodes. Is, which is outrageous. And the people are watching this and cheering it on. And Ben Richards is a hero. And the working class love him. And the bougie love him. And Amber comes with such a hot ponytail. And just they have an awkward kiss. They have a really awkward, no chemistry, zero chemistry kiss. And they walk off and he puts his hand on, on her, her neck, neck again. Yeah. At the end to like, that's so okay. weird. It was it's so, so bullshit. It was so bullshit. I hated that so much. I was yeah. like, fuck he that. did it earlier in the movie, like threatening her. And it just kind of makes no sense. Um, and Q ending 80s music of like we're so strong now but, but the first we're lines of that that 80s is is this is my name and it's like whoa dude oh. what is this inspirational 80s ending where the lyrics are way too relevant to the plot like that's what i was gonna say like like what are the implications of the end is there a revolution it, it, like the government and 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 television seemed to have colluded in this world and it's like what is going to happen like it didn't seem like a happy ending it seemed like it would still be kind of a tragic ending well if russia hadn't hacked the election i mean come on the screen in the slum at the end says please stand by which makes me feel like the fact that they ended on the slum seems like there will be a revolution yeah, I do, I don't know. Maybe I'm cynical. Maybe like I, I I took it the complete opposite way. I thought like the please stand by was like almost the reverse of that, where it's like 
No, we'll, we'll, we will be back. We'll just have a different program. Ooh, wow. That's a bleak, that's a bleak interpretation. Just because I think, like, please stand by implies like, stay. Like it's going to come back. Yeah, we're coming back. But it could be please stand by. The resistance is now in charge. Maybe. But the resistance would get corrupt as well. And then <laughs> they would like, it was stalling out. Um, how many Schwartzies? Dude, I give this movie an 8.5 Schwartzy rating. It's it's an amazing Schwartzy movie. It's a fucking classic. It's not one of the Pantheon top one, top two, top three even, but it's in the top ten. Yeah, I mean... I mean, it's it's in the do top... We have, do we have ten movies to, like, be... We do, we do. We have ten movies that are in our the top. Pantheon? Yeah, yeah, okay. We have yeah. ten I top... I mean, I'm probably... Yeah. Um... I would say, sorry, go ahead. You didn't finish. What would you give this for a star rating? I mean, a star rating, I would give it like, I'd give it the same rating that I would give it Schwartz's. Me too. I would give it seven out of 10. Ooh, seven. Yeah. Not even 7.5? No. I mean, it's like watching it now, just sort of seeing it as a, a, a movie uh, as opposed to like taking the veneer off of of um, the Schwartzy n- element, nostalgia, yeah. uh, I'd give it a seven out of ten because I have a lot of fun watching it, despite like the the weird plot holes. Uh, and I'd give it a seven Schwartzies out of ten Schwartzies because I'm like I'm I'm feeling the fun that he's having, and I want that. But at the same time, the fact that I'm coming from Predator. Or Terminator, where like the performances are just like transcend even Schwartzy is is uh, sort of those are my go tos at this point to be like these this is performance this is like fun camp cool you know? I agree I agree um I mean I'm gonna stick to my eight point five because on yeah, this dude. watching I really felt the nostalgia was a huge element of the enjoyment factor for me yeah. and I felt like it was inextricable in this case so. Hence my 8.5 rating for both Schwartzies and Stars. Um, what do we have next? Uh, isn't Red Heat next? Ooh. Is- I, I'm excited for Red Heat. I'm excited for Red Heat too. Um, I think it's... I think it's going to be better than I remember it. It's going to be better than you remember it. I think like Walter Hill... I don't know. It's going to be cool. Ivan Danko. I can't those, wait. Those Ivan Danko memes, dude. Oh, for the for for the lols for the memes. <laughs> um, thank you guys. So oh much. shit! In Predator, his name is Alan. Alan Dutch Schaefer. I'm not leaving this in. <laughs> uh, Alan Dutch Schaefer. I don't like that you interrupted me. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. We have been Schwartzy the podcast. And talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you.